I lost everything, bro. I lost everything. It was shameful for me, bro. Okay. I felt ashamed to even look at my wife. You know, I felt ashamed that this has happened to us. And I felt ashamed looking back at my lifestyle. And bro, that day, because I'd organized it on Facebook, as soon as I got there, the queue was a mile long. And I realized that I'm onto something here now big. So I was doing these 18 hour shifts in this shop and I was managing all the bills, the rent, the shop trade, the delivery trade, this, that. And I had people in that shop that tried to scream me over. And mashallah, mashallah, we took over that town, bro. It was panging. Six months later, Domino's Pizza, they were behind us. Right, what's going on people? Welcome back to another episode of the Minted Minds podcast. And today we have the legend himself. We have Mr. T. Aishu. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My brother, it's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your content. I've seen what you're up to and I really enjoyed it. And uh, as soon as you approached me, there's no way in a million years I could have said no. So on my first available opportunity, here I am. Mashallah, mashallah. Thanks again, brother. I know you've come uh, a long way. Uh, where, where have you come from today? Then? I've come from uh, North Wales. And North Wales? Yeah. Where are you, where are you based? As in so I'm country? based in North Wales. Are you from North Wales? Yeah, I'm based in, I live there, my factory's there, okay. my setup's there, okay. all my Khandan, Parivar, Sara. We moved out from uh, Bolton okay. 20 years ago and we moved to North Wales. Okay, well, I was going to say that accent. Yeah. Was yeah. I was born in Bolton, raised there, lived there till 24, okay. but moved out 20 years ago. And to be fair, I think it's the best thing I ever did, mashallah. North Wales, mashallah. Mm. Can we can we get your age? Are you happy to just... Yeah, yeah, I'm 40, 44, nearly 45. Okay, okay, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. Okay, just for a bit of context for the audience, can you tell us what you do? Without going into too much detail, because obviously we're going to discuss okay, that. So what do you do and um, what's your day-to-day -day at the moment? So my daily day-to-day -day, day -to -day activities is uh, obviously, mashallah, we operate our ice cream factory. We operate a few different vans. Uh, we tour the country on massive missions and we supply the best ice cream desserts and sweet treats to the people uh, of the country. And we really get involved with them. We engage really well. We uh, love visiting different areas and different communities and serving our desserts. And mashallah, it's going really well. Alhamdulillah, we get a lot of public support, a lot of backing and a lot of love, which is uh, really appreciated. I was gonna ask, you know, the ice cream industry, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, especially the ice cream van industry, um, from what I've understood, it was a dying industry. It was, it was. If you look at you and your success, um, you, you think the opposite. You, know, um, you think it's such a lucrative business, um, mashallah. So well, why why the ice cream business? Well, uh, the, the, the ice cream industry, as it was from when it started, it was a very, very, very traditional kind of a business. There was no change in it. There was no, it was a very traditional, you buy an ice cream one, you go out from four to half seven, you do the chimes, you save your people, you'd make a bit of money, you'd have a round as such, you know, you'd have a fixed pitch where you'd go on every day and you'd come home and that was it. So there was no actually movement on the trade itself. You know, there was no progression. There was no social media involvement. There was no tech involved in it. There was no IT coming to it. There was no Facebook. There was no TikTok. There was no Instagram. There was no variation of that trade. So obviously this day and age, with the world moving forward at such a, a fast pace, that business was stuck in them same ages as it was in the 50s and the 60s. So because of that, I personally think it was a bit of a dying trade. It was going a little slower and slower and people were retiring and looking at different businesses and looking at different job opportunities. But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me the brain when I joined the game a few years ago to progress the trade and to move it forward and to give it that push into the future. And mashallah, mashallah, will you see the results for yourself. Before the ice cream trade, any has anyone in your family been in that industry for you to be like, ah, oh, it's an easy step for me to take because... Yeah, well, when I was living in Bolton, my family is predominantly very, very orientated in this trade. Oh, is it? A lot of them have got ice cream ones. Personally, I'd never done it. Okay. But my family, my baladri, Okay. They're in Bolton, they were ice cream men and they were in that field working as ice cream vendors and sellers and manufacturers. Okay. Okay, let's do, so if we take it all the way back, mm. before the ice cream industry, before um, your TikTok sensation, 
uh, viral videos going mad. Um, <clears throat> has business always been something that you've always wanted to do? You know, of course, of course, definitely, definitely. I mean, I've always been self-employed business owner of whatever I've done. I've never actually had a job. Like sometimes I say to my wife, I say, I'd love to work in Tesco's for a couple of weeks <laughs> just to see what it's like. I'd love to be, you know, just a, a shop, a floor, shelf stacker. Like, I just want to see what it's like to actually work for someone and take orders and instructions because that's something I've never, ever done. You've never had a job? I've never had a job, no, no. So I can't ask you what your first job was. So my first job was taxis. I was a taxi okay. driver back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, even that self-employed. Self-employed, yeah. Yeah, you, and then... Uh, you've not got anyone to kind of ask. You've not got... I mean, it's a very... It's up to you when you go to work. You can have your days off. You come in to work when you want. You go when you want. Yeah. Obviously, me, I used to always stay at work. I was a very, very... I was a hard-working individual. I like working. Yeah, yeah. And I like to put my effort in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was what my first job was. And then from there, we had a taxi base as well. So that was ours. And then when I moved from Bolton to Wrexham, the first thing I ever did was open a takeaway. That was mine. And then from the takeaway, I've got into the ice cream. And that's also mine in London. That's, I've never actually had a job, which is something that I would really like, you know what I mean? <laughs> to be on the payroll, to get a wage slip from a, you know, a different company yeah, yeah, yeah. has always been something on my bucket list, to be honest. I'm actually going to do that. Well, just, just... I, I'm just gonna, I want a job. <laughs> I want to actually apply for the job. Yo guys, I get it. I'm like, I would buzz off that. Like, you know what I mean? I would really, really enjoy that. Guys, if anyone's listening and you've got a job opening, we've got. The- if anybody owns a supermarket, <laughs> get in touch. Why a supermarket though? I just want to do something where it's just a completely normal job, like, you know, something right at the bottom of the stack. You know what I mean? Something what a 19 year old would do as his first job. I want something like that just to see what it's like. Just to experience. It. Just to experience it. I used to I used to work in um, co-op, and um, let me tell you, it's not the most exciting thing. Mm. You won't be having as much fun as you're having now. No, I, I bet not. But again, I, I would just like to see how it's done and how it's run and what kind of things happen there and how you, how you get Italian off and mm. what you have to do to get promotions and things like that. I would like to see how I would perform in that mm. to see what kind of how I would excel in that, you know what I mean? To see from right at the bottom, to see in a month's time what my position would be in the manager's eyes. A church, you get what I mean? So I would like to test myself to see what... what. Because when you're working for yourself, no one's giving you any feedback other than your customers. Mm. You know, you've not got a manager saying to you, Marshall, well done, yeah. you know, here's a promotion, you've got a pay, pay rise. And also on top of that, the good thing about having like a nine to five and having a job is that security in the sense of you got a pay check at the end of each month. Mm. When you're running a business, you don't have that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and that's stress in itself. Yeah, of course. You don't know what month is going to be worthy or not. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, you said you were a taxi driver, mm. and then that led you to open your own takeaway. Well, when I was a taxi driver, when I was in Bolton, I was born there. Obviously, I lived there. And uh, come um, a point in my life, uh, I decided that I needed to have a change from this because... There was a point in the history of Bolton at that time, back in the early 2000s, where society took a little bit of a nosedive and it were a bit bad. You know, the, the living, the standard and the crime race and the red light district and the negative things and the burglaries and the crime and Jory Chikari and armed robberies and this and that. It kind of went really bad in Bolton. I mean, that's to, not to say that it's still like that now. Martial arts improved a lot. I've still got a lot of family there. A lot of love for my hometown. I really loved it there. But at that time, I felt that I needed a bit of a change. You know, I wanted to have something different in my life and I didn't want my kids to see what I had seen and I didn't want my children to grow up in them same circles that I had grown up in. And I wanted them to not even have that brush of society and friends and let's go out and let's stay out for three days and let's do this and let's do that. I wanted to keep them so I could kind of protect them from the evil out there. Okay. And and so that's why you decided to move away from Bolton. That's why I decided to move away from Bolton. That was one of the main factors. Another factor was our house got robbed. My missus got stolen and she was very, very frightened of uh, it happening again. And like I said, I mean, the red light district was just spilling out of town. It was all over the, the local residential areas and where we was living at the time, it was literally everywhere. Mm. And it was a very, very bad 
cup of tea. Like I didn't like it. I didn't like my missus living there. I didn't like my kids growing up there. So because of this and because of my life in Bolton and what I'd seen, I wanted to change. And that's what we decided to do. We decided to sell our house. And then when we sold our house, the money that we got for it, which was all equity, I'm doing that. Because as I said, I was a hard worker. I paid my mortgage off. And uh, the house that we had, we sold it. And we asked Jeeves at the time, where's the best place to move with a very low crime rate and with this amount of money for us to buy a house. And that came up as Wrexham. Now, I'd never been to Wrexham in my life. I didn't know what the doctors was, the schools, the hospital, nothing. Absolutely zero zilch. But we made a move because we wanted to have a better life for our children. We wanted to do something that they would never ever experience what we had experienced in that town. Wait, so just to kind of get it right, you said you asked Jeeves. Yeah, oh, Google Google wasn't a thing at that time. So I can imagine, so this was um, quite a while back then. Yeah. Did you not get any reaction from family? Because, you know... To be honest, my family was all for it as well. With af After the burglary and after various other bits and pieces that happened in my life, they wanted me to have a change as well because it, they knew that I had potential and they knew that that potential would have not been realised in that town because there's a lot of people that pull that ladder from you. When you're in them circles, like the majority of us, whatever business we do, whether it's taxis, takeaways, ice creams, there's a lot of others in the same culture, our cousins, our relatives, this, that, they're all doing it. And the, the scope for progression and the scope to actually achieve something from that is limited. Mm. So they thought to themselves and my parents and my in-laws, which I've had a lot of backing from, they discussed it with me and at length they decided that what we was going to do was a risk, was a gamble. But if it didn't work out, we would always be able to come back. But if it did work out, the sky's the limit. Well, you know, fair play because it takes a certain amount of, um, you know, it takes a man with a backbone to kind of pick mm. up the whole family. Yeah. This is all that you've ever known to somewhere that's unknown. You don't know how it's going to pan out. Mm. So, and I think that kind of um, it reflects on you as a person. Mm. You know, you're sitting here for a reason. Mashallah, you've done very well in business. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, um, mashallah. And, you know, the level of success that you're seeing now is probably a reason. A lot of it's to do with confidence. A lot of it's to do with self-confidence. And a lot of it's doing, a lot to do with uh, realising your own potential and knowing that, you know, things out there are achievable, mm. you know. If you put your mind to something, you can achieve that goal as long as you're confident enough to commit yourself and motivate yourself to chase that goal. You know? So, you, you, so have you always been like very ambitious? I've always been very ambitious. You know, from, from day one, whatever I've done, I've set standards in many, many things, mashallah. And people out there still do what I was doing then and I'm not doing it no more, you know, mashallah. It's like, uh, mashallah, I've always been a bit of a head honcho like. Yeah, no, fair play. So let's talk a little bit about your takeaway business because mm. that's a business that I've not really heard much uh, about. F from what I know, all I know is Mr. T's eyes. <laughs> well, um, so takeaway business, because I know that's a very hard industry too. It is a very hard industry. It is a very hard business. It is. Yeah. But at the same time, it can be a very lucrative business. It can be. Yeah. This is the distinguishing. So I'll tell you how, how I started with my takeaway. When I moved to Wrexham, first of all, the first thing I did was add a a full year when it didn't work. I didn't do nothing because what I left, I couldn't do taxis in Wrexham because I didn't know the area. Okay. You have to know the area to get your taxi badge. Uh, I never even contemplated doing ice cream because it's something that I didn't even think of at the time. But when I came to Wrexham, my main mission was to find a business that I could do that I saw an opportunity in, in that town. So when I moved to Wrexham, first of all, I educated myself. I did a lot of reading. I was in the library 24-7, like, because I had this year out and I just give my time, give myself time to study. I read some thick, fat books and I was just constantly had my head buried in books, which is a very, very good way of getting good with your speech, your language, your grammar, your punctuation. It's fantastic. Reading is vital. Yeah. And then in that same time, looking around the locality of the area, it's a population of 75,000 people. The town is a radius of about 17 miles. It's a pretty big town. It's got a good population. Let's see what we can do. Okay. So I'd never done takeaways at this point. I'd never, ever worked in a takeaway. But we could never find a decent takeaway. There was nothing halal. Okay. They were all 
old chippies, Bude Gore, you know, and the chippies and two Budian Janania in there, little takeaway, and the burgers were falling apart. And pita bread was Sarea Donald and this and that. It was nasty, bro. Pizzas, frozen bases, this and that. So I said to my missus after about four or five months, I said, babe, you know what? This town has got room for a sick takeaway. Like, our style, how they are in Bolton, yeah, yeah, yeah. how they are in Brum, how they are in Bradford. I said, this town has got potential. And she agreed with me, you know what I mean? And me and my business, mashallah, I'm very fortunate that she's born in England as well. So she's got a very good brain on her head, on her head as well, you know what I mean? And she, she's, she's mashallah, very, very clever she is. And she's helped me a lot. And she's supported me a lot. And uh, we discussed it in length. And then we thought, right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to open a takeaway here. No, I'd never done takeaway as well at this point. Never, ever. And when around you had ex any experience in that? Or no, th this is the first takeaway that our family had ever opened. Okay. That's in my 150 cousins, <laughs> and me, yeah, yeah. and all my brothers and everyone. We've never done takeaway. Everybody was a taxi driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. taxi. And I was like the the first, second generation, up and coming. And I was like the eldest son out of all my aunties and uncles. So I had a lot of, sh lot of riding on my shoulders to achieve something for the young ones to follow. Did you feel that pressure then? I would have thought that. There, there is pressure, but it's only pressure if, like you said, if you feel it. If you don't feel the pressure and if you think, right, it's something I've got to do, then it's not pressure. Pressure is only pressure if you make it think that it's pressure. You know, if your mental capacity can accept it that you need to be a role model for the kids or for the young ones, then it's not pressure because it's something that you need to do. Yeah. So you had that discussion with you. So I had that discussion with my missus, my in-laws, my mum and dad, and they all thought, right, go and go for it. Let's do it. So we went looking for a place in town, and uh, we found a place near the McDonald's, nice big shop, very first business, very first shop that we ever took on board, and uh, I thought of a name for it. The name was Crazy About Pizza, and uh, we were in that shop. We did pizzas, burgers, kebabs, and uh, sides and fried chicken and everything. It was a sick takeaway, bro. And I spent a lot of money on it, even though I didn't know what I was doing. I was learning a lot by going into other places, watching what they're doing, seeing what's happening, looking on here, looking on there, thinking about it, figuring it out. What well, made that takeaway, mashallah, one of the best takeaways, looks-wise, it made it look like it was a franchise chain that's coming to the town, where it wasn't. It was just a, a self bedled first ever takeaway that we opened. And then I knew about advertising, I knew about marketing by then. So I got a couple of little smart cars and I had them stick it up like a block of cheese as a delivery vehicles with our livery on. And the people of the town thought it was a big franchise coming into the town. You know what I mean? What, what year are we talking about? Like? This is 2004. 2004? Yeah, two, you had all these ideas. Yeah, I had all these ideas at that time, yeah, 2004. So we had these two little smart cars that were doing deliveries for us. And, and mashallah, mashallah, brother, you know, even though I did not have a clue from trial and error, from the recipe finding out on Ask Jeeves and Google and things like that, Trial and error, brother, after three months, mashallah, my takeaway, I took over all the other takeaways and it was one of the top takeaways in that town. It was beautiful. My standard of food was very, very good. I've always believed in having a premium product, always buy the best ingredient that's possible. Like in just, for instance, a burger bun. There's three different levels of that bun. There's a premium, there's a mid, and there's a low. And it's up to you as a, a retailer to pick a product that, all right, you're going to make a good profit on, but also that your customer is going to really enjoy so my level has always been that premium level, whether it's burgers, chicken, pizzas, this, that. So through trial and error, bro, mashallah, mashallah, we perfected what we were doing within a matter of three months. And mashallah, mashallah, we took over that town, bro. It was panging. Six months later, Domino's Pizza, they were behind us. A year down the line, bro, mashallah, mashallah, 12, 13 lads inside that takeaway. And the operation was so successful. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Me and my younger brother at the time that was the owners of this takeaway, we killed it, bro, mashallah. We had like 12, 13 delivery drivers. We were doing 250 deliveries a night. Everything was on the phone. Bro, that phone didn't used to stop ringing. We were the best. And the service, the distribution of that food was on a different parallel. No one in that town was used to having that delivery within 20, 30 minutes. And this is what I believe in. I believe in speculate to accumulate. You've got to better the service. A lot of takeaways, they think, right, three charge driver looks on. We'll push the drivers, we'll get them to take five deliveries at a time, this and that. Me, I was the total opposite. I had 10 delivery drivers taking just two deliveries, going there, banging them out, food's hot, return work, return work. Sick, bro. Blew up, mashallah, we was doing 300 deliveries a night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was unheard of. And if ever you saw that takeaway, 
how it was, you'd be shot, bro. Everybody was like a factory machine output. The takeaway was on point. Nah, cause you know, I've had a taste of sort of the hospitality industry. I used to have a dessert shop myself. I know it's not the exact same as a takeaway, but there's a lot of similarities. And I understand how difficult it is to keep the standards there, you know, to learn an industry that you have no, no experience. No, because when it, when it comes to uh, <coughs> desserts, I had no, mm -hmm. like I was as blind as they could come. Mm -hmm. I don't even cook, let alone make desserts or anything like that. So I kind of have, um, I can resonate a little bit with your story as to, you know, going to different places, having a look at how they do it. So opening a takeaway, what would you say that was the most difficult? Because I'm sure there must have been some difficult times. There was, there was a, a lot of difficulty. And obviously, if you don't have a clue about what you're doing, a lot of it is to do with just your recipe formats. Okay. You know, like making that pizza-based dough making sure that the dom is cutting right, making sure you're making your burgers properly, your your additives, your ingredients, your tomato base. I mean, a lot of it, a lot, you know, you got to try and error with recipe building. you got to have taste. you got to have interest. you got to have passion. you got to be involved. you got to become that. You know what I mean? There's got to be nothing else to take your motivation and your your focus to anything else. you got to really, really give it your all. Just like tunnel vision. Just tunnel vision, bro. And that's what I did because... I had nothing around me to kind of take me off. I had no friends there. I only had me, my wife, and my three children at the point at the time. And my whole life then revolved around making this takeaway a success because I'd never done it before. There's a lot of eyes watching me. All my family in Bolton was saying, oh, where's Gia? Where's Bunchi Gia? It'd be my child, Maris. But go, it's not Gia, but none. And that was a big move for me, bro. And there's a lot of is it riding on it as well, you know what I mean? Because yeah. if I failed, I'd failed. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't let me fail. He gave me that energy, give me that support. My deen and my commitment to him and the blessings he's bestowed on me then has been unparalleled, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, if you believe that Allah's gonna support you and he's gonna guide you. And whatever negative even happens, there's a benefit and there's a good reason for that to happen. Then inshallah, you're going to succeed, bro. And like I say, after the format and once I got the hang of it, it was child's play then, you know. Oh, yeah. Then it was just about running the operation, mm. making sure it doesn't go pear-shaped. Did, did, it, did it go wrong at any point? Did, did you It did go wrong. That's why I got out of it. It did go wrong. Eventually, after eight years, it went wrong. What you know, I had a failure. Well, what happened is... I was at that time making some serious dough. Okay, so you were very successful with the Very, very successful with the takeaway. Mashallah, mashallah, we was on a different level. Okay. But when I took the lease on for this takeaway, I did not read nothing. The landlord put the lease in front of me. I just signed it. I didn't know what I was doing in it. I've never done these things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a learning curve life, isn't it? You know, now when lease comes in front of me, I know exactly what to do. Now I'll argue that lease and I'll have it in my favor instead of the landlord's. Well, that time, I thought, right, shop there and then sign my role. So I signed it, and the lease was very, very detrimental to my... It was in favour of the landlord, anyway. First of all came the credit crunch. Do okay. you remember that? The credit crunch, 2008, 2009, 2010 was brilliant. 2011, it kind of started dipping a little bit. 2012, we had a major impact on the food industry with the credit crunch. And secondly, my brother, who was my partner, I know who I relied on a lot, he had a brain tumour. And this brain tumour took that partnership and that workload that we shared away from me, you know, because he had this illness. Marshall, he's all right now, he's fine, he's absolutely brilliant. He's in the ice cream and he's got married, he's got kids, everything. He's healthy, he's buzzing. Well, at that time, he went and I couldn't trust anybody in this shop now. I was just on my own. So I was doing these 18-hour shifts in this shop and I was managing all the bills, the rent, the shop trade, the delivery trade, this, that. And I had people in that shop that tried to scream me over, you know, like because they thought he's weak now. You know, when there's, when you're on your own, you're on your own. When I'm in Pakistan, you ik ik that ik, ik, that do, yaran. So like one's one, but when there's two of you, it's like a same equivalent of 11. Yeah, so he had a, this illness. And then with the recession, all those shops in my block, they'd all shut down, all the businesses shut down. And there's only me left. My landlord, obviously, he was suffering, yeah, yeah, yeah. as everybody was. Yeah, yeah. So he had this lease in his favour, so he was putting my rent up. 
willy nilly, willy nilly, he was whenever putting a rent up whenever he wanted. Obviously, at this time, the business had come down a little bit as well. You know, because of this credit crunch, you know, people were really, they were booked at that time. Well, yeah, we're talking. This is like 2011, 2012. Okay. They were booked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I've got this massive rent to pay, council tax, big bills, work's dwindling a little bit because people are literally cut back on the fast food as well at that time. And I thought to myself, I didn't know we had at that time. I thought, right, I'm going to make a move from this shop. I had two, le two years left on my lease. I'm going to move from here. I'm going to go somewhere else and it's going to be beneficial to me. I'll be able to carry on and I'm going to save all this money instead of giving it him. But that was totally wrong for me. Instead of that working in my favour, that went totally against me. So when I moved, the local people in the area, oh, the health and hygiene shut him down and this and that. You know what people talk yeah, like, yeah, innit? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, this yeah. was the kind of attitude that a lot of people had. And also, I had all this stress of working these long shifts and not seeing my family. And so I was a little bit depressed exhausted. as well. I was exhausted, you know. No more holidays. I had a year and a half. I was just slugging out. And then the tension from the landlord... And then he won't see me send the bailiffs and, you know, there was just like a lot going on. After, yeah. And then when I moved, I didn't know. I thought that would be the end of it. But no, the two years left that I had of the lease, you know, like the £2,800 a month what I owed him for two years, the accumulation of that, which was like 40, 50 grand or whatever, he came for that. You get me? So I owed the landlord all that, even though I wasn't in his shop. You get me? So I was dug myself in a big hole. Like they say, Allah gives when he wants. Allah takes when he wants. And that was a test for me because when I had that takeaway, bro, I was very flamboyant. I was very extravagant. Oh, yeah. And I was blowing my money where I shouldn't have. I was buying cars. I was going on holiday. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was very, very excited. I didn't save for a rainy day because you don't expect a rainy day to come. You think you're invincible. You think you're invincible, bro. You think, right, mate, punch you, punch you, punch you, But, Alani Marzuni and he tested me. I lost everything, bro. I lost everything. And then I had people coming for this 50 grand. And I was just depressed. I was stressed. And I thought to myself, right, I need to get out of this takeaway game. So I sold the takeaway for what I owed the landlord. Okay. So I got that money and I give that away. And I had nothing then, bro. I had a couple of houses what I made. Alhamdulillah, I still got them. Mortgage and I had to make this stuff. And I had my own house. And that was it. But I learned from it. A wealth of experience. Yeah, I learned a lot from it. I learned customer skills. I learned social media skills because I did a lot with social media with my takeaway. Oh, I'll come into that. Yeah, I'll come into that. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how my takeaway ran. And mashallah, mashallah, I learned Qadr. I learned to stay on your feet. Yeah. yeah? I learned how to stay without magruri, mm. without akr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught me these lessons. He pushed it on me. But mm. alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, I come out strong and it made me a better person. At the time? At the time, I thought my world is crashing down. I thought this is the end of me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a better plan. That's it. Subhanallah. Mashallah. You know, subhanallah, when you think about it, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, mashallah, at the time, yeah, I was very, 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 very distraught. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a better plan. Subhanallah. Because, you know, being in that mental state, you know, working all these years to build such a big brand, a big takeaway, and for that to get ripped away from you, starting at ground zero. Mm -hmm. Had... It was shameful for me, bro. Okay. I felt ashamed to even look at my wife. You know, I felt ashamed that this has happened to us. And I felt ashamed looking back at my lifestyle and what I did that I shouldn't have. You know, like the flamboyancy. There's no need for that, bro. Bro, when Allah gives you, you need to have respect for that. Why are you blowing your money on cars? Why are you blowing your money on stupid holidays? You don't need that, bro. All right, everybody needs a holiday. But take your time, innit? You know what I mean? I've got that for you, bro. Put something aside. You never know when things are going to change. When you just get... <laughs> Kulai from one hand and Kulai from the other. Where's the sense in that? 
Yeah, I think I've noticed that with a lot of people, especially there's been a few people on the podcast who have said similar things, you know, they're, they're, they're at such an age where, you know, they shouldn't even be making this much money, but, you know, Masha, they're making so much money, but no one's educated them in the sense of, you know, there's no financial education where I had to look after your money, invest your money, you know, just like you said, Allah can give, Allah can also take, just as take, do you know what I mean? Um, so, so what happened next? Because So next what happened, uh, I mean, I was basically at rock bottom. There was nothing there for me. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah give a long life and a healthy life to my elders. My father's passed away, Allah didn't seem correct. But my mum, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law were very, very close. Very close. You know, my, my, my in-laws are as good as my own, mashallah. You know? And they said to me, right, because obviously in Bolton, there's a lot of us doing the ice cream trade and whatnot. <coughs> and I'd never worked for anyone. And I was at that stage that I was going to have to get a job somewhere to keep my, feeding my family, you know what I mean? I've got five kids at this point and uh, I'm on zero, but I zero. From hero to zero. And my father-in-law goes, but what that scream need to dig in there. We'll get a van for you. We'll buy a van. And may Allah bless him. He bought me this van. So he was the first person that got a van for me that believed in me that I would still come good even after all that I'd been through. Because he's seen me, my confidence levels and this and that. And ice cream is a game that at that time is something that is self-manageable. You don't need staff. You can do it on your own. Okay. So he was looking at the fact that I was going to do Talian, this and that, Chai Man Lassan, Deir Dose of Pondi, and I can eat Sikar, Rat Roti the Kaikins, and I'm Billy the Deishwats, and you know, Zahar Baran's a born of Tanabali, yes. He was looking at that length. <clears throat> and so was I, to be honest, because I didn't even think that we'd achieve what we've achieved with the ice cream one. So anyway, he got me this van, he paid £28,000 for it, a 58 plate for transit, Y1, plain, no stickers. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, it's a lot, it's a lot of money but it's not a lot of money. An ice cream man, the brand new ones, they're 120 grand cause. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not cheap. The machine alone is worth 10 grand. And then you got the body and then you got the van and then you got the freezers. And this and that. They're not cheap. They are very expensive. But I was still, he got me this ice cream man. And Alhamdulillah, I was still my own boss. Yeah. I didn't have no one to attend to. And it was up to me how much dedication I give this new job as to what kind of fruits the job would give back to me. How, how did it feel like going from like a takeaway to having to, to being an ice cream? To be honest, I was very happy at the time because like I said, I had a lot of pressure in the takeaway. Okay. I had a lot of, when my brother had his illness and I had no one that I could trust enough to manage that talent. Remember in them days, it was all cash. So I cash, not bad. I one day, two, I on bit. That I got, you know, I was actually happy that I'm doing something that's just for me and I can control it myself. I don't need a million and one people working in it. Really? My kids were young as well at the time. And you know, my missus never worked a day in her life at that point. She never done nothing. I never take her to the takeaway because it was a male dominated yeah. environment, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was just me and this van. And I was very, very happy. And I was going to be at a stage where, Alhamdulillah, I'd paid them debts off and everything. And I was on zero, but I didn't owe nobody anything. I yeah. just had my own mortgage and that was it. No headache. No you know headache. what I mean? And I was happy to be earning less. I don't even know Pakistan means. Thoraka, that's where they are. I had that mentality at that time. I was just thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I had another job, another, another opportunity where I was still self employed and I didn't have a boss. Is it the Bachi Gisi's boss? I didn't have to go deliveries for someone. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. You said you were mentioning when you. Uh... When you did your take, <coughs> social media, even at that point, yeah. played a big part. So, in the year 2010, my takeaway is at its peak here now. I'm, I'm averaging 250, 300 deliveries a night. Not a single complaint all night long, bro. The operation was infallible. There was nothing going wrong with that operation. Sick, bro. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. It was a crazy, crazy operation. It was a very good operation. I had my brother there, me there, and the deliveries were going out. We had all the staff, we had all the drivers. Everything was running on point. But then a company called Justy appeared. So Justy appeared. They come to me. They went to every takeaway. They used to have a rep. They used to go around yeah. trying to pull in the work. This is early days for them as well. Anyway, in my town, I was taking a lot of work. And all the other takeaways, they were suffering from that. You know what I mean? Because obviously, they were, they were making what they'd made of. 
it was decreased due to the fact that my martial art takeover was on the sky's the limit. You know, um, we're doing all the work that there is. We're doing it. You're taking basically. Yeah. Which I was so pay. they come to me. They said, right, we want to set you up. We want to put you on just eat. I said, what's your benefit? They said, right, we take 12%. It was only 12% then. And I said, super simple. Get out of my shop. Those are they're not middle men. Because you don't have the value. They don't have the knowledge. So I said, get out. Do you want, bro? I'm not going to give you nothing, mate. Badly get through. Sent him on his way. But at the same time, every other takeaway in my town signed up with him. So... Uh after a couple of months of everybody else signing up and me not, I started noticing that my work's going down a little bit, like, and there's no other reason for it other than the fact that people have started using this Just Eat website, because it wasn't even an app then, it was just a website. They started using this website and they're ordering off other takeaways instead of from me. So I thought to myself, what's going wrong here? Like, my food is the most premium in the town. No one can test with it. My prices is very, very reasonable. Why are people using a website instead of coming to me on this phone? And then I looked back and I looked at things and I thought to myself, right, well, T, when you're in that shop, yeah, you're getting people ringing you left, right, and center. I mean, I used to stand there with the phone like this and I used to have my, my computer screen pen and I used to just be like, what's your address, please? I didn't even used to say hello. He said, what's your address, please? What are you having, mate? Bam, bam. What are you having? Chili sauce? What's next? Anything else? Anything else? All right, within 20 minutes, bye. And then I used to, used to keep the phone there. What's your address, please? Yep, what's your address? Come on. Oh, yeah. What's your address, please? So I used to take like 15, 20 orders on the phone before even putting it down. Yeah? And I just used to bang it through my computer. Receipts going in the back and just getting churned out, bro. But I realized that people, even though they never said anything, they didn't like that. They like to take the time. Especially Caucasian people. They like to ponder over the menu. They like to ask Charlie if he wants some chili sauce on that. They like to ask Bethany if she likes it in a wrap or on chips. They want to take the time. So they were taking the time ordering and placing an order via Just Eat and not with me. I think it was because they didn't want to use the phone. They wanted to have a, a means and access to ordering via the website. And obviously with the technological area, everything's moving up now. Everyone's getting more into the internet. And this is what's happening at that time. So I've thought to myself, right, I'm going to have to jump on board with him. So I rang the chap up from Justy. He's come down. He's bought me five, six delivery bags. I said, listen, lad, you're going to have to drop about 50 of them off. You know, so he's looked at my takeaway. He spent a few hours there. And he's seen my operation. It's just two, six, it's old, old, yeah. smooth, bro. Smooth, clean. <laughs> yeah. So he's come back with about 15, 20 delivery bags. And that's all they give you. They just give you a delivery bag that says Justy. And he set me up. And next thing you know, I've started getting orders. And within that first few days, bro, in the first few days, I've become the top seller again. Straight, on the, straight away, bro, because yeah. my takeaway is banging. Did so you get, did you, at that time, did you get customers saying, why are you not unjust Why are you not unjust I did, but I used to say, I'm not going to bother with that because, okay. you know, obviously I didn't want to give them 12% commission, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. So anyway, when I've gone with Just Eat, straight away, I'm the top seller. I, I shall have my business started booming again. In fact, it's probably even more deliveries than before. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I, I had my phone and then I had the internet orders as well. So it was literally gotten vital again. And Just Eat used to take the commission every two weeks. So the first week commission came, 12% or X amount. Obviously, I don't want to pay them three bags just to give me a few delivery bags. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's all they're doing. They're paying for, you know, and I thought to myself, and then anyway, I was another week coming, they took another three, four quid. And this is freaking my head out now, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, right, I need to bypass this. I can't not give some next man three, four grand every couple of weeks. Commission, you know what I mean? I need to do something here. So then I thought Facebook had only opened in 2007 then. You remember, Facebook was a new thing as well. Yeah, right. So after I right, I looked at it, I looked at it, I just had a little brainwave, I thought, right, if they want to order online, they can order online, no problem. How can they order online? They can text me on Facebook. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So this is what I thought. So I made a page for my business, Crazy by Pizza Rexham, and I started taking pictures of my product, I started blowing them out, and people then started following my page. In that town of Wrexham, I had like five, six, seven thousand followers, 
pretty much straight away. You know what I mean? And then I started putting templates out. This is how to order. This is you need to order via Facebook. So I created even novelty after novelty. So this is a totally new thing. So people could literally take the time, look at my menu on Facebook, and they could send me a text message on Facebook. So I had a stand where I had my phone, I had my computer screen there, and I had my other phone there. So I was literally managing the Just Eat machine, my phone, my uh, Facebook account, and my uh, the, 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 the screen. So I used to stand there, and I was like a robot, bro. <laughs> Because the order started coming through on Facebook, Facebook, Facebook orders. And then I put special offers, order via Facebook, get free garlic bread. So people are stopping now on phone and they're ordering via Facebook. So all it is is a message. And I relayed that message on my screen. And I said to them, I didn't even used to talk to them. I used to press the voice button. Right, bro, thank you very much for that. It's going to be with you in about 45 minutes. See you soon. Well, I didn't even use to text. I used to voice messaging back. I've got loads of them in my phone now. You know, all these. That's all, a, all these. It's man. It's a sick one, yeah? So with that, I had that means of internet orders. First thing I did is I shut Just Eat off. So so was it so when you started the Just Eat ordering system that you created yourself pretty much, yeah? On on Facebook. It, on Facebook, sorry, yeah. <coughs> Were people actually using it then? Like, Bro, it went vital. Facebook is a very, very predominantly used pl- platform yeah, yeah. in the Caucasian people. Especially, they love, especially back then. They love it. Yeah, yeah. They love Facebook. Yeah. yeah. They lo- even now, bro. Okay, okay. Even now. Okay. Facebook is vital, especially in English. Yeah. People yeah. like. So they used to buzz off it. And then they used to have a competition every day, win 20 pounds with a free food. And they used to put five, six different pictures of my food on. And bro, the Porsche used to get 900 shares in Wrexham. So I would literally just blank in Facebook in that local area with my pictures. It was everywhere, cause cause people do anything for something free. Yeah, so yeah, you give yeah. them a yeah. So people were sharing like mad, and I was giving them not one winner, not two winners. I was having three winners a day. What's twenty pounds with the food costing me? Ditto. Yeah, with the amount of exposure. It's causing me ditto, yeah. but I'm everywhere, yeah, everywhere on the local Facebook in that town. So there's no other takeaway doing these things, and the Facebook bro is a ting ting. It wouldn't stop. But Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me that mental capacity to be able to manage it. Because it's a different thing doing it and not being able to manage it. Mm. So I could manage that. Yeah, I'm just thinking about if, if someone was to have done that today, that, that could be hectic. Bro, I'm going to do it now again. I've got another takeaway ready to open. I'm going to open it in a few weeks. Oh, that was the, actually my next question because you know once you've had a taste of something, especially if you've had that success. In- this is what I say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. He got me out of that. He got me into this. I know, I know my family and my kids are all grown up and getting back into the takeaway as well. So I know for a fact, bro, I've posted on my, t- I've said to them, my people in Wrexham, I said my takeaway is open, bro, he's had 9,000 shares, yeah. 900 likes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1,500 comments, they're dying for it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that town is still stuck in the dark age when it comes to food. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. okay. So me coming back into the game is a big thing for the local people. I've been in the papers, they start, they're ready for it, bro. And this time now, it's going to be only Facebook and phone. We're not going to have... I'm not even going to go with food over. I'm not going to go with just eat. Nothing, bro. If they want to pay by card, I'm going to send them my bank details over. They can put the money straight in my bank, send me a picture of the transaction. And that's when they get the food. I think with Facebook, there's. I think they've implemented a system. I'm not sure exactly how accurate this is, but... You know, with the chat system, you can have it automated so you can take orders online. Yeah, so they've got they've got a yeah. little system. Definitely yeah. look into that. Well, like I said to you, Alhamdulillah, Marshall and my kids are very similar to me as well. So you know, I'm going to train them in how, how to manage it. The automated is just the first message, and you Don't still you have, have the whole ordering system. Yeah, I think with the with the menu and the ordering. System. I think you have, but I think that personal touch. No, you can't be the personal. That touch. personal touch, my brah, that does it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. thing is, it's a personal touch, then, isn't it? You know, you're dealing with people like when they're dealing with me. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be inshallah. I'm going to be inside there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to be in the takeaway. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to be up my man. The work doesn't stop with you, eh? Yeah, I don't want it to stop. I'll stop, inshallah, one day. And that's the last day. That's when it'll stop for me. Inshallah, I like to add it. I like putting effort in, bro. I like to create something from nothing. Yeah? I like to see achievement. I like to see goals getting reached. And I like to see fruits from that achievement. And alhamdulillah, like I said to you, Allah's taught me Qadr. And he's taught me humility and these are big things and he's taught me that he forced that one upon me you know 
and martial art, these are qualities in a person. You know, when you have these things, I don't want to blow my own trumpet. I don't no, want to big myself up. But Alhamdulillah, I would like to say, Allah kare da magruri kal no ija. But aaj ta kare Alhamdulillah, now as I am as a person, that is the least. I mean, I don't even like using the word proud. I hate using that word. Proud, that's magruri. I hate using that word. That's not in my dictionary. You know, this brings me nicely onto what you're doing now, because you know we spend a bit of time, and there was so much more that I could ask you about your takeaway and the whole experience, because I know you've learned so much. Because it's, you know, <coughs> what I can tell is the reason why you're seeing the success that you are today. You know, because there's so much that you've. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Blessings, brother. Alhamdulillah. You said something which was interesting, which is personal touch. Now I believe that. What differ? What makes you different from all the other competition out there, especially when it comes to ice cream business, <coughs> is you yourself, your brand, Mister T. So where where did this idea come from? So you said you you went you your father in law brought you an ice cream van to uh, to where you are today. When was when did it click for you? When did it explode for you? When did it so sort of become? So I'll tell you the story about the ice cream man. It's a bit of a long one. So we've, we've got, got time. time. We've got time, man. We've got time. So this is exactly how the ice cream one started. So I've got the van. I didn't know what I was doing. Nothing. No machine thrown in the judge. No kuj, no corn but in the judge. Nothing. So I started off. I went on my day, first day. I don't know if you're telling you on this stuff. And uh, you know, I started learning. And a month into it, after one month, I'd learned how to operate this van. I learned how to sell ice cream. I learned how to make ice cream. I learned how to wash the machine. I learned. But I'd not em employed any social media into the business or any IT into the business. It was still Just very true. traditional as it was back then. So a month after the the actual thing that I'm doing here, yeah, I thought to myself, I said, listen, so there's a bone, but now they are. And I thought, there's got to be more to this than that. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's got to be more, you know, or, you know, there's got to be a way of making more money in an ice cream. Bar. What can I do? You know, Alhamdulillah, let's give me a very inquisitive mind. I'm not satisfied. Even now, I'll still say that I'm only on the first ladder. There's lots more that I've got to learn here. You know, there's a lot more that's achievable and capable from this game. So at that time, I thought to myself, what can I do to make some more money? Like, you know what I mean? There's nothing that, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So then I thought to myself, right, mashallah, I've got this following on my Facebook from the takeaway where I had all these people that respected my brand, respected my work ethic and they know who I am and they could trust me. Why do I not do something with my Facebook, with this business? What can I do? What can I do? After thinking about it a bit, I made a little post up. I used to look at the TV live and I'd be in sleep at night thinking how can I bet at this? And then one day it struck me, I thought, right, everybody loves things coming to the house. This van, I can't do it legally. I'm not allowed to work in a van with the chimes after half past seven at night. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's the yeah, that's yeah. the cutoff. You're not allowed to put the chime on after that. Half past seven cutoff. The ones that do it till eight, nine o'clock, they're breaking the law. Okay, okay. People do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they get a complaint, you get action from that from the council. Okay. Anyway, <coughs> I thought, they used to love my delivery service via Facebook. Why do I not bang a poster saying, you used to chase the ice cream man before, but now the ice cream man will come to you when you want it. So I put post out saying, right, I'm now starting a new service in Wrexham to my lovely people where I'm going to bring to you in your comfort zone at your beck and call a home delivery service where the van comes to your house and makes the ice cream at your doorstep, whatever you want, up to midnight. Did you ask anyone around you if that was going to be a good idea? No. Okay, so you just went blind yeah, faith. Yeah. I never asked no one, look. No one's ever advised me anything. Not a single person I could say. Alhamdulillah, everyone's loved me a lot, my family and that. But they're not advised me business-wise. MashaAllah, they've achieved many things over elders. But they were still in that first generation year, the limits to what they could achieve. Yeah, yeah. You know, they didn't understand this social media like, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? There was nobody to advise me. There was nobody to tell me anything. I was just in Wrexham on my own. And, you know, it was just me and my family. I, did, I had all these de ideas myself. So I thought, right, I'm going to put a post out on my Facebook and I'm going to get people to order and deliver it. Like they used to order the pieces. They could send me an order through 
and I'll drive the van to the house. Bro, that went off. <laughs> that went off, G. So you were literally taking orders on from Facebook. So I was coming out at four o'clock, doing my round till half past seven then streets. And then half past seven, I started doing home deliveries. But when I started doing the home deliveries, I would engage with the people so much. I'd make it such a fun f feeling. Like an experience. Like an experience for the kids. And the kids, once the kids have started talking about your business in the schoolyard, that's when you've nailed it. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When the kids start mentioning you in the playground, that's when parents can't say nothing to kids. <laughs> yeah. They have to do what that kid wants. So I become this big thing where, and then by that time I had my van decorated and things like that. I put the stickers on. My branding that you see now, my beach theme, I had that branding then. Okay. I got it vehicle wrapped, big stick around it. And I knew that you have to make yourself look professional to be professional. So my van was standing out from the crowd and then I went and bought these shirts. At, the, at that time, they weren't as colourful as they are now, okay, but it was just yeah. an ice cream shirt. Okay. It was made by the company Penguin, and I bought it from uh, Cheshire Oaks Penguin Shop. I went there, and there was 70, 80 quid each. But I bought them all because I wanted a uniform. So I bought all these shirts, and they were white, and all it was was just little ice cream cones everywhere. And I... I, I well, but what made you think, oh, that's a good idea. I want to wear a, a shirt with... To be professional, you have to act professional. To act professional... You have to make sure you look professional. That's the basic bottom line. If I went to work in my hoodie and my bottoms every single day, it doesn't look like I'm putting much effort in. Mm, mm. But when I go to work with a specific ice cream shirt, short sleeve, button tied, ready for work, I'm putting that effort in. I'm making myself look professional. People appreciate that. People like to see professionalism in your business. When your staff are there, like just for instance, a takeaway, now you're going to takeaway. You'll get six staff, six, and they're all wearing their own normal clothes. It doesn't look professional. Bro. It doesn't look nice at all. I always say this to you. Do you get me? It does not look like you're yeah. putting effort in. You don't there's no rule, there's yeah. no regulation there. If they're not even bothered about it, that basic thing as a uniform, what's the kitchen like behind that closed door? Exactly. People pick these things up, bro. Mm. To look professional, act professional, you have to be professional. And the basic bottom line is you have to look professional. By having a specific works uniform. Was anyone else doing it? No, no one was no doing one it. Else was I, was doing, I was the first one. That's what I find most interesting. Is I was the first person to start doing a home delivery service on Facebook where they could message me and I would go to the house. So this bro went off. I started working till two in the morning. I was out longer than the takeaways were open. <laughs> I was the only thing on the road. Me and the police was the only thing driving about. That's crazy. And taxi drivers. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. That was the best, one of the best ideas I had. But that brought this game into the future. Mm. And that was a starting point for me to build on even more. Because like I said to you, brother, you may think you know it all, but you don't know nothing. You get me? You may you may think, right, I've achieved something now and I'm happy at this stage. But that, that stage could be the very first the point beginning. of the ladder. That could be the beginning. Never ever settle where you've achieved so far. Never think, right, I'm, I'm happy. That's it. I'll You've got to always look to improve you got to look to implement new ideas. you got to always look to change it, to better it, to make it more catchy, to make it more accessible, to make it more appealing. And this is what you got to do. You can't settle there. Mm. So then from that, yeah, bro, for six months, yeah, I was just driving around, selling these 99s and Knickerbocker Glories and Screwballs and Magnums and this and that. And was this just in Wrexham? Just in Wrexham, yeah. Okay, okay. But at the same time, I started having people because people used to share my posts because the same thing I applied to that, the principle I applied to, you know, the free food. Yeah, yeah. I was giving people 10 pounds with a free ice cream for sharing this post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I had such lovely looking ice cream pictures, you know, just like normal 99ers with the sauce dripping and this. But people used to go mad for it. I was doing like 50, 60 deliveries. And now I was doing more deliveries than a takeaway was in an ice cream one, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. And then... The brainwave came, the change in the game then came. I was only doing minimum order eight pound and I was only selling two pound ice creams of one pound fifty for a cone and a pound for a screw ball and a ninety nine was ninety nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, back in them days. I wasn't really doing much, you know, I was just and I was quite happy with that at the time. Okay. But then the, the change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gave me a, an eye opener. This is a very, very good one this year. This is the next year now. So I've done this one year just doing home deliveries. I've implemented, I started in about March, April. And all that season I've been doing, one month I did it normal. And then I started throughout the winter, because this is what you've got to remember. 
the van was still out in the winter. I didn't stop because I was doing home deliveries. People still wanted to eat ice cream. I was coming to them in the comfort of the home. They didn't have to go out nowhere. So this was a, a year-round business now. <laughs> so alhamdulillah, I've got past that stage where I normal ice cream man packs up in October, comes back out in it's February. It's like a seasonal business. No yeah, no, but that's gone out the window now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is my first year of doing it. Anyway, come next year, January the 15th, 16th, Easter's in March. And the Cadbury's company, they put the Easter eggs out early, don't they? Because they want to sell as many as they can. Yeah, yeah. So I've walked in the shop here, which is a co-op in my area. I'm not, I've not gone in there with an idea to better my business. I'm happy with what I'm doing. I walked into the shop and uh, I'm just getting whatever I'm getting. And I look to my left and there's a mountain of Easter eggs, you know, stacked up on top of each other. And Allah ni kudrat, alhamdulillah. Allah idea they're nailing. Banda pa me socha, me socha, banda kuch bhi socha sakta. Allah ni marzi na sara kuch jana. Unna me mare dhamaga vich pai. Why do you not buy an Easter egg? Uski adha karte ko my Facebook pangin already now. You know what I mean? I've got that platform. I've set it up. You know my Facebook's win off. I've got like ten thousand followers, <coughs> five thousand friends. I'm maxing on my my profile. Booming ji. Yeah, I'm getting results. I'm making dough. Why do I not buy an Easter egg? Cut it in half, fill it up with ice cream, and it's still that ice cream, but it's a different way of selling it. Put a bit of sprinkles on it, sprinkle, sprinkle, and half a dollar, and half a dollar. And anyway, bro, I did a big jump on a price that product at three pound fifty, from two pound maximum like what I had to three pound fifty. Yeah, I priced that product for three pound fifty. I put the picture on. <laughs> But I can't even, yeah. <laughs> Boom! The picture went viral, G. Yeah? Everyone's like, oh, yo, I want to try that. And all it is is a bit of chocolate with ice cream in it. It's just a different way of just a different serving way. that same product. Okay? And that just went mad. That went mad, G. So now my phone's going ballistic. I've not even got around anymore. I'm literally doing home deliveries from 12 in the afternoon till 12 at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm just doing home deliveries. Making some serious till in an ice cream one. No rent, no raise, no bills, no wages. The boat up chico chick, lago lago kasi toksi. Mashallah, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me that much. Yeah? And I used to sell the, the thingies, piece of tissue, kitchen roll, put half an egg on it, thought he ice cream bowl. Now, yeah, there was three basic flavors of bubblegum, bubblegum sauce, bubblegum sherba. I didn't even have the sweets and this and that then. I'd not even thought of that then. So this is like the This first. is just like This is the very first Item outside This is the, the very first Bit that you can say Movement or progression Progression in the trade From 1.50 coins and things like that The easter egg mm. <laughs> Yeah Well as all good things They come to an end Easter nali ande muki Okay Me I knew the end day I got to finish here yeah? And I've been to every shop Supermarket Cash and cut and I've stockpiled, because they do have a day till about June, July. Yeah, yeah. I stockpiled as many under as I could. Jitne mare ko like that. Bro, once you, hit, once you hit a number, the last thing you want to do is go back to the previous number. You want to stay at that number, or you want a bigger number. Yeah? So I'm now buzzing with this £3.50 there, because instead of £1.50, £2 ahead, I'm on three fifty ahead. So every delivery I'm going on is like, Pandaran V Pong, Pandaran V Pong. Opposite of like, so also really the idea of that. Good time, good time, you know what I mean? And I did not want that to end. Yeah, obviously, you don't, innit? No one would, yeah. So, 100%. when the eggs have started coming to, I mean, I bought all the eggs and I'm still carrying on as best as I can. But they come to a stage where these eggs are nearly finished now. What can I do? You can't go back to. I don't want to go back to a pound fifty. Mm. I need to make sure that I maintain this three pound fifty per egg because I'm used to it now. I've had a few months on it. Shugal mela wal lag gaya tha. Sare harche pure hone pe tha. Alhamdulillah Allah us wala kadar bhi pai chodi si paise nahi tha. I appreciate it. You know. I thought what can I do now? You know what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Well, I brother, daughters are a blessing. My daughter was born six years ago. This is about the same time that I blew up. She was born on born on March the nineteenth. My day, my birthday. March the nineteenth on a few days of birthday. Easter bees around the first of March or something, don't it? Yeah. So my eggs at this time now are nearly finished. And March the ninth, March the seventeenth, eighteenth, around that time. 
Sochi, 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 that what can I do to keep this momentum going? This is just a few days before my daughter's born. May Allah bless her, she's so beautiful, mashallah. Yeah. Barkat the Ramat Yeah. She bought a kismet with her. And a couple of days before she was born, I had a brain wave. I remembered when I was a kid in Bolton, my next door neighbor, he was a bit of a mechanic here, and he made his own camper van. He got a smiley transit back then days. And he, he made it, he put mattress in, he put a little kitchen in, put a shower in and everything. And to have electric supply in that van, what he did is he went to a shop called Maplin, who the bundle he did, and he bought this thing called an inverter. He bought an inverter and in his camper van, he had a 240 volt socket where he could plug things into like a microwave. I go, I go to these cash and carries all the time. And I see their waffles ready made and I see these fudge cakes. People would love this. Why do I not put a microwave in my van? And I start buying these fudge cakes and I start selling them hot fudge cakes in three or four different toppings. At the door, I'll become like a mobile reserve parlor. I married the two or three days before my daughter was born. The day after, Alhamdulillah, I woke up and I was on one bro. First thing I did, I went to my plane. <laughs> First thing I did, yeah, I went to my plane. I said, nah, I need this thing called an inverter. I didn't even know what it was. I just remembered it being called an inverter because I remember him saying it. This is when I was nine, ten. Yeah, Allah did it. Yeah, Allah did it. 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 So I went and got this inverter. I bought it back. Connected it to my body. Shoved it under my seat. And I put it in and then... Uh, I bought my microwave from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kitchen, I had your microwave, I like a leaf. Put the gadini microwave, shelf and all that. I didn't know where to put it. It was rolling the bed everywhere. So, what I did is uh, I put three cases of Pepsi underneath it and I jammed it into underneath the shelf. This is the first original style. So, the, the microwave is on top of these cases of Pepsi and I jammed it under the shelf and I put some cardboard and this and that to make sure it doesn't move. And I plugged it in, bro. The microwave started. The microwave started. My missus was having to pregnant at this time. I'm going to go to a buddy at Ut. Ut, Julia. Let's kick it to Kashikari. Went to Kashikari, bro. Bought boxes of waffles. Daughter had waffle in the bed. I didn't know what success I was going to do. I thought I'd try it. Yeah. I bought a couple of boxes of waffles. Bought a couple of fudge cakes. Brought them home. And then I thought, right, I need something to put it in. So I bought them Chinese containers. Do you know them 500 CL Chinese containers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought a box of them to put the waffle in to heat it up. To give it to people, you know what I mean? So I did that. I come home with all these ingredients. I took to my van. Got off like put it, put ice cream on it, put chocolate on it, picture marina, bang! bang. But they are like, wow, fucking hell, we've never seen this in an ice cream one. Loki, the community's behind me because I'm progressing this trade and they're proud of the, well, they're happy the fact that I'm from Wrexham and I'm achieving these goals and I'm setting the standard of this trade. That people are buzzing off me being a part of Wrexham and doing these things. So, bro, that went off. That went off. So I had hot fudge cakes now, and I had waffles, and I had like five different, six different variations of these items. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I never had a break in that three pound fifty ad. Mashallah. Yeah, I never had a break in that three pound fifty ad. Mashallah. So I'm doing deliveries now, bro. The deliveries are coming in left, right, and centre. People, because it was a Facebook thing. Yeah. Everyone in Wrexham's got cousins in Chester, got cousins in Hollywood, got cousins in Queensford. Oh, sorry, I don't from I used to get loads of message requests. Mr. T, why do you come here? We want to try your ice cream. We want to have a look at this thing and we want to see you. We want to see you. Yeah, because my engagement with the customer has always been on a different level. It's next level. I've yeah. seen it. Now. And I love my customers yeah, yeah, yeah. and I appreciate them. And I want my customers to feel that appreciation and that love. And I go out of my way to make sure that my customer's happy with the service they receive. People are going to spend money anywhere, bro. Where are you going to spend money? You can have a fudge cake from a million and one shops. Where are you going to go? Where you feel appreciation and love. Even if it's a pound more, you're not going to mind paying it. Well, you're going to spend it. If you're going to go for a fudge cake, you're in the mood for a sweet treat. You're going to look at where you're going to feel appreciated and valued. You're spending your money whatever you want. So you're going to go where you're going to get gathered. It's a big thing. So, mashallah, these things are blowing up now, yeah? So all that summer from when my daughter's born, mashallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah, bari karmani, 
रंग लाई छोड़े सारे सारी असानी बता दी सो दिस ट्रेड आई आई ओ इट टू माई डॉटर फॉर द ब्लेसिंग शीज बॉ अपॉन दिस गेम बिकॉज नॉट ओनली बेनिफिटेड मी इज बेनिफिटेड हंड्रेड ऑफ आइसक्रीम मैन नेशनल नो अलहमद लाला दस सैस द आवर अल्लाह सुबह तक थैंक यू फॉर यू नो माई ब्रदर्स इवन इफ दिव नॉट दैट मोच सक्सैस दे डू नो लॉ पैर दम दे बिफोर यू नो रो मीन इस चीज ने मैं बड़ा मैं खुशी होनी है कि माड़े भ्रा जो आइसक्रीमें कम बिचन वो सौ डेढ़ सौ पौन तो वही गए त्रे चार सौ पौ सौ दिहार ना बनाने तक बड़ी खुशी होनी है यू नो आई लव दैट आई लव दैट आई लाइ ऑल माई ब्रदर्स यूज माई पिक्चर्स आई लाइ माई ब्रदर्स यूज एवरी थिंग ऑफ माइंड टू प्रमोट दम सेल्फ यू नो एंड आई गोज फॉल आर रून अबाउट ट्वेंटी पेज इज इवन नाउ ऑन फेसबुक वॉल माई ब्रदर्स देर बेट लिटर एंड दे कैन स्पीक वेल एंड आल डू ऑल द हार्ड वर्क फॉर हम इवन नाउ यू कैन गो थ्रू ऑल माई फेसबुक पेज इज लोड्स Mm. all over the country that i run for people the only they need that could we need what well, i do it for the love of that person and i like to see them succeed hey allah if you happy for your brother succeed allah is happy for you to succeed very bad monday yeah and when you want what you've got for your brothers that's when you're going to get more of it bro mm. yeah so alhamdulillah this went on till october november anyway everybody's hammered these waffles and fudge cakes and yeah. this is the, this is the next one right? this is this is the cherry on the cake okay yeah everybody's have hammered in my own town and people you say come here come here and i say i'm not going to come i'm loyal to rexham i'm only going to serve you if you come to rexham i'll serve you at the b&q the tag job so i never went out of town you had no intention of <laughs> i had no intention of going out of town and now look here you look at this <laughs> listen on the pura mulk it ha picha bhai jode i know every single road to every road we need the sign up I can tell you anywhere, bro. Alhamdulillah. But anyway, what happened then is uh, the work started again, started dwindling a little bit because everybody's had five different fudge cakes and different varieties. I had the three, four different varieties. So I was still working on sprinkles, sherbet, and nuts. That's it. Okay. Red sauce, blue sauce, and chocolate sauce. That's it. I was still on basics, but I got the, I got like a a bit of a momentum going with it. So anyway, men. They do not like it when the partner thinks the work's quiet. So I was. This is October, November time. I said, "Jani, I'm just here. Cheese, yeah. Jara, Jani, which Gara Talana, he doesn't want his wife to think that I'm thunder. He'll always say to her, 'Alhamdulillah, Allah is good. Business is come much.' So anyway, one day it was busy, rainy like mud. I'm out. I've done a couple of deliveries, and I'm sat there waiting for deliveries. And this never happened before. I never had a break in orders. I would always have another order to go to. And this is the first time you This is like the first that. second time now that I'm experiencing that I'm having breaks in orders. I'm having to sit there wait for my next order. Yeah. Was that scary? It was scary but at the same time it was good because these things when they happen it make you think about how to make it like it was. Hey Allah ni tarfu na pai. You might think it's a negative but it's actually a positive. Yeah. Oh. So I was sat in a petrol pump. Now I've mentioned them 500 CL boxes. I was doing fudge cakes and I was doing waffles. But never had the demand and I'd gone at that point. Listen to me. So I I'm sat in a petrol pump waiting for a delivery. I've sat there for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But it's not any I'm thinking yeah. Mother car I don't want to call. I don't want to go home and say to Mrs. Tabaka because yeah, you yeah. but yeah, yeah, I don't like doing that. Make a mal up and I'm busy and I don't know. अल्लाह जी यहाँ मदद करो दुआ मंगया जहाँ गड्डी बच्चे कुछ करो अल्लाह जी कुछ कुछ करो हमारे पास है प्लीज गॉड हेल्प मी लाइक यू नो आई मीन डू समथिंग डू समथिंग आई डोंट वांट टू आफ्टर गो होम एंड सेट द मिसेस इज क्वाइट टुडे सो एनीवे आम अपने में चोबी गाइस यू कैन सी लाइक यू नो आई मीन आई लाइक माय फेवरेट चॉकलेट इज मिंट ह Without sharing, <laughs> I share one. And that's just for me, bro. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sat in the petrol pump. I thought I'll have a bit of comfort food, as you do. I'll go and get myself a chocolate bar. So I walked into the petrol pump. I picked a mint arrow up, paid for it. I come back to the van. I sat there and I'm looking at this chocolate. Uh huh. Hang on. Why do I not smash this chocolate bar up into tiny, tiny pieces? That plastic tray that I've got there, that I've been doing fudge cakes and waffles in, why do I not fill that up just with ice cream? 
put chocolate sauce in it, put this mint air over it, and take a picture of it and put it on and see what happens. So this was just like... This a... is the first time that I had the idea of putting a chocolate or a topping, other than sprinkles, nuts and sherbet, on the ice cream. The Lord has blessed me immensely. And he's helped me many, many times. So I've done that. I've smashed this chocolate bar up. <laughs> I've put it on the ice cream. And yo, you know what? It looks sick, bro. <laughs> yeah. But now that ice cream is a mint arrow flavoured ice cream, which is something I've never done before. But then thinking of that at the same time, once that went viral, I've opened the doors to 100 different chocolate bars and 100 different flavours on top of the ice cream. So now my menu is limitless. Yeah, yeah. So many different combinations you could have. So that's where that happened. That was in that same year when my daughter was about eight, nine months. So that was a big year for you. Then. That was a big year for me, yeah. Like the trajectory for you from that moment kind of went. From that moment and then from then, the next morning I went to the shop and I just bought crunchies, I bought Maltesers, I bought a twirl, I bought a whisper, I bought Snickers and this and that. And I took all morning, went and taking pictures and making my menu bigger. Because then there's something for everyone. Yeah, of course, of course. And, and they can never get sick of that menu. And and they can always try something new. So that made my work limitless, bro. That made me never have a quiet day ever again. Mashallah. Mashallah, at that time. And then the the next big step, and this is the final one, guys, I'm probably boring you out back. I know, I was, I'm so like, it, your story is, it, it, it's engaging because, you know, the story is so true to like, what a, a real entrepreneur is is getting an idea and executing it mm. how many people have sat there now and said ah oh, bro i thought of uber back in the day i had this idea bro we all got ideas mm. the only difference is there's people out there such as yourselves that have an idea and go and execute mm. and not many people do that mm. so you know i'm listening to you and i'm thinking you know the reason why you're successful mashallah is because you're not afraid to execute on your ideas mm. you've had the idea you put two and two together you thought okay i'm gonna do that You've seen, you know, someone put a microwave in the van. Oh, you know what? I have to go this. <coughs> and, and, you know, it's got to where you are today, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. The blessings of Allah and the, and the blessings of parents, the love of the people. Exactly. Yeah? And if absolutely. you appreciate a person that you never met in your life, bro, that person's going to appreciate you. Mm. You don't know whose blessings are going to come into handy for you in your life. You don't know, bro. Anyway. I've carried on now. My loyalty lies with Wrexham. I'm busy as anything, bro. <laughs> I'm really busy, yeah. Real. I'm making some serious till. I've got my other brother on too. i got him a van. We were operating three vans now. Okay. Just doing home deliveries in Wrexham. And it's like we're covering the whole of the villages, the borough. We're covering the whole borough. So we've got one van here, one van here, one van here. All the orders. I'm operating the Facebook. Everyone's messaging me. I'm taking a screenshot of the order to the relevant van. And I'm sending it to that van. And that one's knocking the order out. Okay. And I'm still dealing with all the customers. We're doing 150, 40, 50 deliveries a night just in an ice cream mats, bro. We're selling dessert left, right, centre in that town. All night, every night. Weren't people not like thinking, oh, I was expecting Mr. T to deliver No, this. they're Did not you know? in it because what I was doing is I was alternating the areas. Okay, okay, okay. I was alternating the postcodes that were, you know, like... Oh, right. was, so you get to see everyone on, at one point. Yeah, I was seeing... Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, though, they were seeing me because... Um, the, the the last thing I do is text people, bro. Mm. It's either a video or it's a voice message. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's my means of communication. Mm. I ain't got time for texting, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's so 1970s. <laughs> yeah. Who texts his yeah, yeah, Bro, yeah. it's either a video yeah, yeah, yeah. or it's a voice message. Yeah, so yeah. they're dealing with me. Okay. And then when they message back, oh, that was lovely, that. Thank you very much. So it takes seconds, bro. Seconds, But then yeah. he cut the So I was, as soon as they message something back, oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Tell Susie I love her to best. And I'm going to see you next time, yeah? See you later. That works on this book. It's that personal touch again, yeah. though, isn't it? And they're seeing me. It's not like they're not seeing me. They're seeing me. Okay, okay. Got you, yeah. got you. So I'm seeing my people on my, my channels and I'm seeing them here and there. And on the roads, Bandit Flasham, I don't know. I thought they all, yeah. Well, the van became synonymous with Wrexham. Police was doing that to me. Celebrity. Yeah. Like it, it, it rose my ranks in between the people, yeah. Anyway, I said to people, I, a message is coming from everywhere. saying, come out this time, this time. We want to try it. I said, I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying in Wrexham. My loyalty lies in this town. These people have been good to me. And they still are, mashallah. One day I got a message of a family, a father, yeah? It was my two-year-old kid. 
all he does, bro, he doesn't do nothing. He doesn't watch YouTube or nothing. What's the you for one? No, no, no. Facebook camera. All he does is watches your Facebook. He's dying of leukemia. Okay, so. He's dying of leukemia. We were hoping that before inevitable, you could come to our house and see this kid and, you know, maybe give him an ice cream. He's probably not going to eat it, but just give him a bit of fun time. I saw that, but regardless. Any decent person with morals, conscience, can't say no to that. Money's not everything. <laughs> These kind of things are vital. Not only for yourself, life satisfaction, but appreciation of the blessings that you've had to see others that are in these situations to try and make a difference. These are big things. So I said, and he was in a, a city called Chester, which is the next city for me. I'd never been there. Okay. I'd never been there. I, I agreed to come. I said, right, I'm going to be there tomorrow. Four o'clock, I'm going to be outside your house. Give me your address. Send me your address, everything. I'd not told anybody that I'm actually going there. I thought I'd go there, do that thing, yeah. and I'd come back. They've told people that Mr. T's coming. Yeah? This is where the out of town visits started. This is that day. They've told me, Mr. T, they've told people that Mr. T's coming. I've gone there. Bro, it's in a little cul-de-sac. People's biddies, old buddies, everything's next to us. I'm in a little dead end part talk. Can't never deal here. Bro, next thing you know, via Snapchat, via social media. Bro, half of Chester's come to that guy's house. Um, from four o'clock till ten o'clock, I've not moved. No, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I've stood at this guy's house, and people are snapping it, and I'm doing snaps with them, and this and that. Yo, people are coming from everywhere. Five all coming things. What's this coming out? <laughs> people looking out the window. What's going on? So Mr. T's parts outside some next man's yard in a different city that I've never been in before. And I'm licking off the ice cream left, right, and centre, bro. Taking in some serious though, bro. I emptied my pan. That's crazy, man. Bro, check that. And Lani then, no? It's God's giving, God's giving things. Yeah? You know, I'm just picturing like just So bro, I've caused a ruckus on this estate. I've not moved. I weren't planning this. This is hit me. And I'm thinking... Like, what, was, what was going through your head at that Bro, I, I, what was going through my head is, Ya Allah, Tera Shukra, Ya Allah, Tera Shukra, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah. I'm Miji, what was Shukra, Tera Shukra, Tera Shukra, Tera Shukra, And I knew that I'd stumbled onto something new. Because I'm a sheikh. Us sheikhs, we, we don't let something happen and we don't let it happen once. We make sure we make it happen again. <laughs> I don't know if you know about Obladri, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we're very, very business oriented. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm here now. I've emptied everything. I've never made that much money in my one. First of all, I've not had any dead time. I'm not to drive here in the. I've had a constant queue of customers. Night, all night, 10 after 10, 11 o'clock, I finished. Didn't, the queue didn't break. I had a queue of customers. I've never seen that before. So this was like the, the peak. This is, this is, this is the introduction to my visiting different places. And, and then my Facebook started seeing a massive influx from that area of more people joining me, more people joining me, more yeah, people yeah, following yeah, me. Yeah. Because I'm in that area, the people that didn't know about me found out about Find me. Out about, yeah. yeah, and it's just going off. So, Alhamdulillah, come Muka. I'm driving home now. It's a 15, 20 minute drive. I, I'm speechless. I'm gobsmacked to what I've just done. What's just happened? I was on my own. No one was with me. Oh, so you was literally no, no partner. No, no nothing. No, my missus never worked a day in her life, bro. She's never ever. She's been a housewife full time. She's done a beautiful job. She's raised six beautiful children. Mm. Very well mannered. Very, very well organized house. You know, mashallah, she's got it a lot, bro, for for a lady. And I appreciate her more than I appreciate myself. Mashallah, she's beautiful. Anyway. Behind every decent bloke is a very, very decent woman. That's something you need to learn. You need to have good for that woman. You need to appreciate that woman. Don't knock them, bro. You know what I mean? Women, women, they can make you. They can also break you. But when you find a good woman, bro, appreciate her. Anyway, my, my missus has been very good. So I've drove home now thinking, right, either lovely or young. This this job has reached a different level. Different level now, you know what I mean? I've gone home, I lie down in my bed, I sat down, I was give my give my missus the money to count it out. That's again. I never counted money, I keep it to her every time. That's nice though. And you know, it's like uh, 
there's, there's value to the woman as well. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You know, it's, it's appreciating her efforts. So, so you know, so before we get to where you're talking now, like you gave the money to your mom. I don't know, Morris is. No, sorry, you missed it. Yeah, sorry. You miss I used it, to yeah. give it to my mum as well, yeah. but predominantly my missus. Yeah. So you because missus, she, sorry, yeah. she one who lives with yeah. me. My mum at this point was still living yeah. with my other brother. So, like, you've had, like, one of the most successful days up until that point in your career. You're at this place, unexpectedly, Shh. cues after cues. What was that drive like home? Like, I was I was speechless. I was in my mind just thinking, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. For this, yeah, for yeah, this, for what you've shown me, the potential of Allah SWT, of this thing, what I've created, what you've created, but Marab Sila is through me, you've, it's getting, it's getting achieved. So I've gone home, I've given money to the missus, and she's, MashaAllah, what's going on? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I've said to her, buddy, hey, man, I'll enjoy it. I've gone on my own need to look after that two year old kid. Allah, I mean, that chapter party that did that. I don't know whether they looked at my niyat or whether they looked at what, or whose blessings it was, or whatever it was, he's opened the doors for me that I didn't even know existed. Yeah? So that door, when it opened, obviously I've gone home and I've thought about it, and I've thought about this. The no, chest is a big place. I've only gone into one little corner of Chester. Chester's like a 25-mile radius city. I've only gone into one little corner. I thought to myself, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go back again tomorrow. <laughs> but this time I'm gonna have it organized. So literally I caused a ruckus that night. Uh, with cars horny and beeping. I closed the, the state was gridlocked. People thinking, what's going on? But I can't get sleep in the house because I'm outside somebody's house. I'm on an estate. You know, you can't do these things on estates. You need to have a nice car park. Yeah, okay, okay. You know, you need to have a car park, you need to be stable, you need to be here there, set up. Ready. You need to have the stock yeah, yeah. ready for it, because I actually ran out of stuff. Because I'm that's yeah, yeah. I actually ran out of stuff, that's why I had to finish. Even though I was very well stocked because I was always busy, but my stock ran out. That's I was running out of everything. And I had to say to people, oh, I've not got this left, I've not got this left, I've only got this. And they were still buying something. And that to me is uh, not doing the business right. You can't say to a oh, customer, I've run out of this. I've run out, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lowering your standards, that is. No matter what time of day or night it is, you can't run out of your product. Mm. It makes you look like an amateur. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I've gone home and uh, I've said to my buddy, I've listen, we need to, I need to do this again, but I need to organize it. So I woke up in the morning and I put a Facebook post out there. It's still there. I'm like, if you right, if you go right back all them years, you'll see that post. And I said to people, I said, very sorry for the ruckus that I caused on your estate. And uh, I do apologize. But uh, thank you very much for all the people that came and really appreciate the love and value that you saw. And I really appreciate the new followers. Thank you very much. Today, I'm going to come back to Chester, but I'm going to go to this area. I'm going to park on this car park and you're welcome to come and come and get served. And hopefully I'm not going to run out of nothing. So other than just getting enough stock, did you have anyone else with you at that Listen point? Listen to me. This is the, this is the thing. So my missus had never worked a day in her life. But that's such a beautiful she. And that day, when she seen how tired I was when I come home that night, that first night, she goes, I'm going to come with you. Maybe not just some. But that's how that does. She's been there for me in the when I've been in the gutter, when I've been on the moon, she's just been by my side. And that you can't express how much you need to appreciate that when you have a woman like that. Mm. Yeah, so she's been by my side all the way through, yeah. So she goes, I want to come with you. I can't see you that's how you like. So she came with us the first day ever that she worked. And my little baby's only like 10 months old or something like that. And she's left her at home and she's come with me. And bro, that day, because I'd organized it on Facebook, as soon as I got there, the queue was a mile long. And I realized that I'm onto something here now big. I go, these people, they all want it. They all want to experience this ice cream. And they all want to experience this, this thing. Because the kids are talking about it. Bro, that's where it started. And then I didn't look back. And then the next day, thank you very much to the people of Chester. Today I'm going to be in D-Side. <laughs> thank you very much to the people of D-Side. Today I'm going to be in Hollywell. Thank you very much to the people of Hollywell. Today I'm going to be in Flint. Thank you very much to the people of Flint. Today I'm going to be in Queens Friday. And I started taking me and my missus on these jobs. And obviously she's a very quick learner as well. So we then streamlined this business. And mashallah today, alhamdulillah, we're at a stage where mashallah we've got multiple units. These are blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we've got a factory, we're known up and down the breadth and width of the country. Our brand is very, very popular. Everyone can relate to a Mr. T's ice cream. Mashallah, mashallah. Many, many brothers I've supported, shown them exactly how I do it, taught them exactly how I done things. Amazing. And this is the one as well, bro. You know, when you uh, when you teach a man with niyat mm. and love, and you want that man to succeed, bro, that man's gonna pray for you, mm. whether you want him to or not. Bro, deep down in his heart, he's gonna have feeling for you. These are things that make you achieve more and have have more respect and have more love and have more credentials. Marshall, I've taught many brothers, bro. Alhamdulillah, that's one thing that I'm very happy about. Again, I'll never use that word proud, but I'm very happy that I've taught so many brothers nationally exactly how to do what I do. Are you not worried in case like you teach someone and no. you know, and he creates a bit? No, 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 not at all. Bro, I teach many people in Blum. Yeah. Bro, I'm the lad Arab Bandini Rosie Lihi already. Make I'm nothing, bro. I'm nothing. I'm just a, a messenger for that person. I'm, I'm a yeah. go between. I'm that person is Rosie's already written. Mm. His 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 earnings are already written for that day. Risk is written. Risk is written, bro. Why should I try to take that risk from him? Mm. My Allah will take my risk. Yeah. Bro, you know when you start thinking like this, you have no pressure. You have no worldly headaches. You only have... I-class I competition is very, very good for me. Because I feel that that brother... I can't be there all the time, but that brother's still doing what I'm doing in that area. He's still got my thing going on. Brother, I would, I, I, I've had instances where I want brothers to come and join me and do what I'm doing. I want them to come part of the pan next to me. Or the old DJ really here and all the here. You can't, you can't test with that. Has anyone tried to cause any problems? <laughs> I know, you know. I had a lot of hate initially. Initially, I had a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. You know, but I do everything legal by the book. I'm not, I'm not fly pitching. I'm working on a national level. I've got many licenses, but also I'm working in areas by the law. Now, the law is. The law is you're not fly pitching if you're either at a charity event or you're in a private car park 10 meters away from the public highway and you've got the permission from that owner of the car park, I can legally trade there without any qualms or questions from any kind. This is why I do what I do. Mm. I'm legal, you know. Many you people know. say, oh, he's fly pitching and he's coming out of turf. It's not your turf, you know. Allah's put this land there for everybody to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you now, though, what's happened really? <laughs> <laughs> recently me going to an area it introduces a new item to that area and I'm only going to go there once or twice or three times but then I'm gone yeah. well then my brothers that are in the area they capitalise on that they yeah, keep doing that opened I've opened doors. that door for them in that yeah, area yeah. so mashallah mashallah I find that I've got a lot more respect from people now mm. than initially for going to that area and opening that idea in that area because my brothers are making money off it now. I just find it crazy because you can just literally say on the day, guys, I'm going to be... Bro, I, I, only tell, I only tell people an hour before I get there. And yet, you know, you see queues upon queues, people just waiting to... Like, people are queuing for hours to come and uh, taste your ice cream and get... Mashallah, the mashallah, bro, the biggest queue I ever had, Allah Takabar Nablai, the Chufi Nablai, was in Newport City Centre. All Caucasian, bro, the queue was four hours away. Four hours. It was a mile long. That is... I started at half past one in the afternoon and I finished it. No, I started at half past three in the afternoon and I finished at half past one in the, in the morning. Non-stop, two runs. Bam, 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 bam. There was no TikTok then. It was just oh, so this is before TikTok either? Bro, this is just on Facebook. Bloody hell, mate. Because obviously I've come across you from TikTok. Yeah, and Opera have only come across me on TikTok. Opera don't bother with Facebook. Which I think is, is the missing out. Facebook's got a lot of potential, but people don't utilize it. I probably don't, unfortunately, and I find this is true. They don't like reading that post. They'll just scroll past it. They don't like reading. They like a visual. Whereas Caucasian people, they'll read things. So this is where my my uh, notoriety was achieved within the Caucasian community via Facebook. My posts are long, bro, mm. but the in-depth and the detail. And the, but one thing people like is they like punctuation, grammar, and they like good vocabulary. 
Mm-hmm. When you like that, they'll appreciate you. They'll have respect for you. You know how you manage, because, um, you know, when, when I'm looking at you on Insta live, uh, TikTok lives, yeah, you give 100% energy to every single person that comes here. Probably that person deserves it. How do you manage that, though? Because because the human body is such a beautiful thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such a fantastic machine. Let me give you an example. It's your first day at the gym. Your first day at the gym, you're going to pick. You're going to do three reps. You're going to go on the treadmill for 20 minutes. And you're going to be exhausted. Yeah? But if you keep going to the gym for three months, after three months, you're going to do 100 reps. And you're going to be on that treadmill for two hours. And you're still going to have more energy to go. The human body becomes accustomed to what you put it through. So this tolerance are built up over time. Obviously, remember I just said that first night I was exhausted. Killed me off. But after six years of doing the same thing, that tolerance level, that mind, that body, that voice box, that heart, the muscles, they expect it every night. (laughs) You get me? So that's where the tolerance level has built up. And my engagement with my customers means a lot to me. It means more to me than the customer. If I don't engage up to my standard with that customer, I'm not happy with myself, bro. Can you see yourself ever leaving the industry? Um, to be honest, it's something I'm very passionate about. I can see progression in the industry. I can't ever see myself leaving the industry. I love meeting people too much. Mm. Even if I'm at a stage where, inshallah, I like, I don't know what's around the corner, what he's got in store for me, where, what his plans are. Obviously, a person can only think so much. The final plan is his, isn't it? Mm. But no matter what stage of life I'm at, I love my people, bro. Mm. I'm a people person. Yeah, I'm, 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 hungry. I'm hungry for the love. Yeah. The love is what does it for me. And... I'm, I'm sorry to say that I can't leave the people bro, no matter where life takes me. The reason why I say that because, you know, I'm just looking at it from a work perspective, like, because this is work, yeah? You're going to and go work. It is a repetitive job, isn't it? If, uh, you're... It's repetitive, but it's totally unique. It's totally different every single night. No night is the same. Okay, 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 okay. Every single customer that I serve brings his own charm. Everybody's unique. There's nothing that I've done twice. I've served thousands of people, but I've not repeated the same thing once. So for you, it's just every day is a new experience. I know it, bro. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this life to cherish, to appreciate the blessings that he gives you. And if you do that, if you appreciate it and you're happy for it, and you you, you accept that he is the best of planners, uh, and you show love to the people that he's sending to you, Bro, you know, I'm walking in my hands. Yeah, mashallah, man. You know, I'm, I'm so happy for your success as well. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. You know, I'm still, still at the very bottom, bro. Success, financial gain, these things don't interest me, bro. Material things. Bro, I had that then. And then when Allah took it off me, bro, I, I realized that these things are nothing. But what's a car? Bro, you know, I've got a, a standard two liter diesel I've got. I've got a privy at home. You know, all right, my ice cream man's are brand new, but that's my work. That's what you're you know, doing. material things don't interest me, bro. Mm-hmm. I, you, know, you know, you know, like when people say, I have to have a big watch, a Rolex. You know, I've got a watch that's cost me 250 quid. It tells me the time. People out there spend 50 grand on a watch. What have you achieved? Can I find that again? Or have you achieved anything? Oh, um, people are going to say, wow, gee, wow. Wow, he's got a 50 grand watch. What gate have you got? What what is that doing to your final day of judgment? I think it's a scary thing because and I think it's especially with the younger generation. I think they Bro, you know what the younger generation, mashallah, mashallah. Too much love for them. But again, they're very easily led astray. Bro, I was led astray. I've been there and I've done that. You know what I mean? I've yeah. been there and I've wanted that fame and that quick cash. And you know, bro, there's no barkat in it. There's no rahmat in it. There's no peace of mind. You're looking over your shoulder, bro. You're thinking that next that next knock on the door, that's going to be the last knock. 
Bro, what are you feeding your children? Bro, look at yourself, man. Look at what you're feeding your kids. I made a move from that town because my feeding the kids was not right. And it's obviously paying off, man, Marshal. Alhamdulillah, bro, when you make your intentions good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your person that you call to for help and he helps you to achieve your dreams. He'll open doors for you that you don't know existed, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, like, I, looking back here, you know, you was at a stage where you've hit Grand Zero again after opening a takeaway. <coughs> Very well, back to Grand Zero again. Did you ever think you'd reach the level? I never ever thought of the chance like this again. Because in this life, brother, a man only normally gets one opportunity. Mm -hmm. As you're probably aware. A man has one opportunity in life where if he's reached the top, he either stays at the top or he falls and that's it. It's very just, rare you see just, someone coming back. It's, it's very rare that you see. I mean, I, I, I cannot express how much shukra I've got in me for the opportunities of actually having to, being able to rise again. Because that is just something that never happens, bro. You know. Has anyone famous come seeing you? Loads of people, but I don't know who they are. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know who they are. Like, I don't know. I've done many things where, you know, I'm like the preferred choice of ice cream for all yeah. celebs now. So like, you know, when uh, the Capitol Road shows are on, mm. you know, they have ice cream men in the crowd, but they have an ice cream around the back for the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm the ice cream man that goes around the back. They pay me quits for that, bro. Yeah. Oh, you do that as well, though? I do all of that, yeah. I'm like the, the, the bee's knees in it, you know what I mean? So I love every single famous pop star coming to me for an ice cream. And I won't even know who it is. And I'll never ask him for a picture. I'll never, not, you know, nothing. I told my kids with me once. Oh, it was at the, the Fusion Festival in Liverpool. <laughs> so I'm around the back now, yeah. And they've got like 25 different top-lining artists there. And uh, they've got Little Mix, is it called? A little Mix, shit. With all these big names and this and that. And I took one of my kids with me. I don't know who they are from Adam, bro. Me, that goody, but that. I don't look at fame as a big thing. I don't look at status as a big thing. I'm not bothered who you are. If you're good to me, I'm good to you. Simple yeah. as that. If you're going to show me respect, I'm going to show you respect. And I've served all these big people. And, and my kids are egging me to say, get a picture, get a picture, do this, do this, that. And I've let them go. And my dad goes, Dad, you know, you just served then. And I've not known who it is. Me, one of you, not any out, not any out, not any out. I don't know who it is. Yeah. You know what? And I've had so many what you can call famous people that I've served. Bro, I only find out that I served him after they've gone. Mm -hmm. I'm not into all that. That's not my cup of tea. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I'm a people person. I've not got big ambitions to be famous and reach for the stars and be... I mean, Allah's given me these things himself. I don't... I don't expect these things. These are things that happen from his blessings. I don't expect these fame and this following and this and that. I don't expect this. This is happening on his own. Sorry, this is happening on his own. Alhamdulillah, bro. You know, I don't know famous people. And then people afterwards, uh, somebody said to me once, they said, oh, you said <coughs> this person, you said that. But I won't mention no names because may Allah give them more fame. But bro, I, I wouldn't even class that person as famous. So it's me, to me, when a person thinks that he's famous, to me, he's still just a normal guy. Yeah. Fame is... Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to be famous when you go up there, not down here, bro. You know, it's fame, guy. Jar, they are any fame. What are you going to achieve with that? Four days fame, that's it, game over, bro. So, you know, in regards to your family, uh, <coughs> is your mom and dad still? My father, Lajan, is going to pass away two years ago in the COVID epidemic. Oh, My mother's, mashallah, very healthy. She lives with all her sons and daughters. <coughs> she spends two, three nights with everyone. Yeah, and she spent two, three nights here, two, three nights here, two, three nights here. What's not the times on it? And how how is your, you know, how is how's your mom reacted to all of this? You know, there's nothing to them. You know, what what is it to them? They just think that I'm going to work. Not to, I don't, I don't. to see their children doing well, mashallah. Yeah, she's again, she's very appreciative from him. It's nothing to do with me. It's his blessings, bro. What I achieved, I've not done nothing, bro. My children doing well and this and that. This is not my doing. Bro, you know, when you think like that, bro, life perspective changes. You have no problems. Alhamdulillah. Wow, that's deep, man. It's very deep. Well, it takes a lot for a person to actually start believing in that. And a lot of people don't, and they'll pass their whole life and they won't. 
Brother, it only happened to me when I hit rock bottom. I wasn't like this before. You know, you have to experience something. You like to, yes, there's got to be a trigger to make you think like that. If you could give yourself advice for when you were grinding away taxis or whatever, <coughs> and you could look back and you could give yourself a piece of advice, what would that advice be? Take more of a stance in your deen. Open your eyes more into us. As open your eyes. Appreciate your family more. Respect your parents. Their blessings are invaluable to you, bro. And open your deen. Do what's necessary. Do what's required from you more. Everybody makes mistakes, bro. But when you realize, you realize you need to make sure you don't fall back in them mistakes. You need to appreciate blessings. You need to appreciate givings because these things are not given to everyone, bro. You know, bro, I'm telling you now, gee. I look back at my own younger days, I think to myself, what were you doing? Bro, I had stacks of cash coming in. But when I left Bolton, bro, I had nothing. And then when I lost my takeaway, I had nothing. Bro, increase your deen, increase your man, have love for the God. Read, pray, and dedicate your life. Look at different angles, appreciate your brothers, want for them what you want for yourself. Don't think, I want to rise above him. I want to be better than him. Say, I want to be better, but I also want him to be the same level as me. When you think like that, bro, think life changes, bro. Life changes drastically, you know, when you start thinking in different ways. My thought patterns are very, very different to when I was a kid. You know, even the worst to worst scenario now, I will still look at that as a blessing. Like, when I lost my takeaway, I was distraught, bro. And I wasn't looking at it as a blessing. And I didn't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a better plan for me. But when I look at it now, <laughs> subhanAllah, mashallah, yani, he knew I'm going to get him out of this. I'm going to make him the top don in this. And then I'm also going to give him this back. I didn't think that at that time. That's what his plan was. But also at the same time, he made me believe in him. And he made me have appreciation for him. And he made me more righteous than what I was. I wasn't that, that flamboyant. And now these material things are nothing to me, bro. You know? Well, you think you're a bad man with a lambo? Bro, you're nothing, mate. If you've not got your mum and dad's duas, and you've not got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your side, what are you? You've got a lambo, all right? Chill out, Gadi. Get the Gadi, Jasen. These are nothing, bro. These are toys for dunya. Have you always been close with your family? Very close. Parents are everything, bro. In-laws are more closer to me than anyone. Well, you got a good relationship with the in-laws. Very, very good, bro. Very good. Because, you know, in this day and age, it's very, it's very rare to even hear that. Bro, you know what? You've got to make the effort, though, you know? They're not going to come to you on a golden plate and have a good relationship with you if you're not known from under. you got to make them feel appreciated and valued. you got to show them love, bro. Bro, they, sometimes it's a case of when you meet a girl, especially now, you meet a girl, there's a lot less arranged marriages than there used to be. A lot less. Yeah. You meet a girl, you don't even know her parents. Yeah. And initially, them parents are probably going to be a bit sour on you for taking their girl from them. But well, it's up to you to perform and to educate yourself and to act in a way and a matter and a manner that them parents start to like you and you grow on you. You need to appreciate them, bro. Because a parent is a parent, bro. Whether it's your in-laws or whether it's your real ones, their blessings are what count. I'm very close with my in-laws. Because, you know, uh, forget you having a relationship with the in-laws. You know, nowadays I've heard so many horror stories where they won't even let their own wife go see their own parents. You know, this is this is the things that I'm hearing. Because <laughs> and it's just like... This is, again... This is the dunya, bro. <laughs> and this is the dunya. You need to make sure you need to keep him happy. And if you keep him happy, bro, things will go well. Mm. You know, mm. a man that does keeps his wife from going to see her parents, I think personally that's wrong. Mm. Whether he feels that's wrong at the time of doing it, that's his personal situation. But I find that as long as he's happy, mm. things are in your benefit, whatever, whatever you want. Whatever, whatever you're doing works out in your favor. 
As long as Dean's on your side, you're not going against him. Bro, this is our Iman. Yeah. He's like, you know, mashallah, from what it sounds like, you know, your wife has been there through, you know, thick and thin. Yeah, 25 yeah. years, we were married just a few days ago. Mashallah. That's we had our silver wedding anniversary. Yeah. yeah. How much would you owe your success to your missus? All of it. Mm. She's done everything for me. She's given me my workforce. Yeah. She's given me my home. A man can create a house, but a woman creates the home. She's given me support. She's controlled my emotions. She's been with me when I've progressed. She has fed me. She has watered me. She has clothed me. I owe her everything, bro. Her and my parents, I owe them everything. I'm nothing, bro. That's how much respect I got for my wife. I love her to be, it's my job. You can't, I can't see her every day. I can't see myself having to come to that day where either she's not there or I'm not there. Mashallah, man, you know, it is, it's actually beautiful to even, you know, hear something like that. And, you know, may Allah keep blessing you guys and, Amen. you know, um, continue a nice, happy, mm. successful, you know, married relationship. And I'm the, it's so, it's no, not, it's so nice to see, yeah. especially, I'm, you know, you guys are working together. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I can't work in the van when it's not there. <laughs> well, I didn't really love her yeah. I, I mean, like, like, for the English customers that are watching, my heart's not in the job when she's not in the van. <laughs> I mean, I do many other things like I do have to sometimes take her son with me or one of my daughters comes with me because all our families are not the thing. But when she's not with me, my heart's not in the shop. You got me, mashallah. That's how much of a click we've got. She knows what I'm going to think before I have even thought it, bro. You know, and I think that's a very, very key thing. Women nowadays, I mean, it's become a such nowadays where people are in these throwaway relationships. And they're falling out over the smallest things. Me and my wife have had many arguments. We've had many discussions where I've said I'm in the right, she said she's in the right. And this is this is my younger life. Obviously, you need to make sure you're malleable. You need to make sure you're soft. You cannot have these little arguments that make the relationship end. And above all, you need to have trust. Trust is vital. You cannot hide things from a partner. Just not, your partner not knowing your PIN number is a trust issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My missus is logged in on every single one of my accounts. I feel. So she's on my Facebook, she's on my, the only one that she's on is WhatsApp because you can't have two accounts logged in on WhatsApp. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but obviously she reads it all every morning. She knows the PIN number. Every day. The first basic line of having a trustable relationship and a relationship that's gonna go somewhere is being able to not have a single secret from each other. Because I'm thinking, you know, even from her perspective, like you're obviously now in the public eye, you know, a very well-known person. You know, I'm sure there's probably been a few people that have tried to visit <coughs> you, tried to, you know, get you to come out with them, things like that. So, you know, for her to even trust you and for you to go out every night, is a big thing, do you know what I mean? And also having a supportive wife, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and and some people can't even stand there being with their partner for more than an hour, two hours. You're with your missus pretty much all day, all day long, and all night as well. Yeah. So if you was to we like this is this very rarely happens where she's not with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very rare. Mm. I'd rather it not happen. Mm. If it was up to me, I'd have bought her with me and dropped her off at somebody's house right. and then picked her up straight after I finished. But. You know, she wanted to go and see her parents. So, uh, so what's, what's the magic ingredient in regards to sort of... It's just having a, a mutual trust, a mutual understanding. You've got to give each other space as well, but in that space, you've got to have appreciation for each other. Yeah. You know, she appreciates me, bro. It's the little touches in life. And then, you know, she feeds me, she clothes me, she looks after me. She, she takes as much burden of my life off my shoulders as she can. That's a lot to me, you know what I mean? That's my only real person. Yeah. Taking burden off my shoulders, my responsibilities are shared with her and her responsibilities are shared with me. This is what you call a team. It can't just be a one-sided thing. It's got to be teamwork. This is what makes a relationship blossom. And this is what, in our religion, and in any religion, this is what makes them relationships where the two, the couple, they grow into grannies and granddads. 
the sare chitte bahalo ne and they still with each other you know that's that's an achievement in itself yeah. if you can achieve that in this life brothers and sisters are you you fit are you bro are you so what's what's next for <clears throat> mr t so i know you spoke about opening the take so nice the take away i'm opening because obviously again my children are all grown up now i got six children of my own i got my nieces and my nephews i've got a big family i got work fast there now yeah. i need to make sure take the <laughs> team solid I, mean, i need to make sure that everybody's occupied because as soon as you're not occupied you might start withering withering here and there and everywhere you know dwindling uh, and alhamdulillah if allah's give me the energy in the uh, mountain he's give me that color and he's give me that knowledge to do these things why am i not doing it of course yeah so okay. inshallah i'm going to get back in the takeaway as well a couple of my family members are going to come off the van they're going to go in there full time <coughs> as well as me making appearances i'm going to teach them to be like i am in that shop there's going to be my name on there you know i've got videos fully ready so <coughs> well, what's it going to be called is it going to be the name brand that he owed or no is it something called no it's called mr t's oh mr t's okay okay oh well, actually i think i have seen something how long ago did you post it just a few days ago Oh actually it was a while ago actually. Yeah, so so again so the world. Again ago. again I'm going to try and keep it not on TikTok as much. It's more of a Facebook thing for my people in Rexham that you are engaged to because I'm that far away from everyone. I'm not going to get people and I don't want people to think that I always bragging now okay. on my TikTok. Oh take away color na gaji nazar lagi. There's a thing called evil eye. You know I'm doing this for my benefit and my family's benefit. And if it's not related to my people on TikTok, why would I want to post it on there as much? Now with the f- full take was ready, it's been in the newspaper and everything in my area. And on my Facebook, the posts have gone viral. Okay. We only really relate to people in the area that Make go and eat there. Make so sense. why would I want to bring everything from there onto my TikTok? Show what that. I don't want to show off. No, but then again, because you got such a big presence, yeah, you yeah. get people from all over the time. I probably would, but that's something that I'm going to come to at that stage. Okay. I want to implement it. I want it to only appeal to the people that it's really okay. appealing to. You know, it needs to appeal to. And obviously, afterwards, you know, these things don't stay hidden. I am actually going to think of opening a TikTok just for the takeaway, as many shops have. You know, because I, inshallah, my end game plan is takeaway is a thing that if it goes well nowadays, franchise. franchises like that. You know, so that's something I'm going to have to look into. I'll be looking to get one straight away. You know what I mean? And mashallah, the success rate that I've got, the business model that I've got, the platform, the method of operating, the modus operandi, mashallah, is, uh, I've not seen it even now. Have you, have you got an opening date? Uh, I want to say a couple of weeks. End of this month, I'm here. I mean, uh, it's just a couple of little small things, menu, you know, the computer and a couple of little things that left. Well, your, your main thing is still going to be the ice cream industry. My main thing is going to be everything. Okay. <laughs> my main thing I'm not classing myself as having a chutti. You're a machine, man. I don't want a day off, bro. Mm. Allah's give hours in the day as long as you pray when you need to, you've got time to do anything. Nothing's a challenge, bro. Take in your stride. Be a man. Mm. I like that. I like that. Yeah? Only things start stressing you out, bro, when you let them stress you out. I don't want to sound like Andrew Tate or I don't want to sound like any of these guys, but I'm depression. You can only experience depression. Alhamdulillah, I know there's people out there that just, I was depressed myself, but this is just an example and I'm not dissing anybody. Generally. You can only feel that pain if you allow that pain to get to you. Otherwise, you won't, you won't feel that pain. That's such a strong mindset to have, that is. Yeah. Me, inshallah, I'm going to be at my factory as soon as I get out. I'm going to make sure whatever ingredients are going in them batches They're up to point and up to level because that's my job. Mashallah, my son's running now. My putter and smart like in the alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Yeah, my putter and my factory smart like in the ever deal with the country, bro. Mashallah, we've got mass big database. Mashallah, we supply nationwide. So that that's crazy how you've gone into like wholesaling now. Yeah, like, well, that was the next step for me, and obviously naturally the next step. You know, I I needed to be making that thing to my own personal choice and standard, and uh, I needed to be. So another thing, all these brothers and that, that all over the country that have helped to into this into this game to do the home deliveries and park ups. Now they're obliged. They they don't say it. They don't. I don't have to even ask them. As soon as I open, bro, they were buying my milk. Mm. Allah works in mysterious ways, bro. Mashallah, look at that man. You know you've got you've got brothers that you've been helping. Some would say you're creating your own competition. You're helping there. But this is a benefit to them, bro. You 
you just put in an idea into that brother's head. He's doing his own hard work, isn't he? He's still got to put in the graft. You know, he's still got to do that graft. I'm only telling him, I'm only going to meet that brother once. And I'm going to say to him, right, this is how I do it. This is what you need to do. This is, take ideas from this. Look at how I've done it. Try, try it out. And if this doesn't work, try this one. And if this doesn't work, try this one. You'll find a formula. You'll find something that works in your area. Mashallah, my brothers are killing it. And I'm so happy for them. My brother's success means more to me than my own success. You know, when you think like that, success follows you then. Have you, so like, you know, in regards to, so I know we're coming towards the end of the podcast. Um, so in regards to scaling this, this business, is, is it just a matter of getting more vans out on the No, roads? scaling this business now. Um, my personal, we, we peak at seven vans. Any more than that, and we are not family running them. It's outside employee running that van. Unfortunately, as it is, we've kept our vans family. But sure, so okay, so all these other vans that you're saying No, no the other vans are other people, hundreds of them. These are independent, their vans. Is my own vans, we've got seven vans under trading under my name. Sorry. Now only two or three of them come with me out of town. Only I will go out of town. The other ones are set up doing home deliveries in various okay. areas. They set up. They're doing their own thing. They set up. They're doing home deliveries. Oh, you saw so the home delivery system. Yeah, yeah, of course we have. Yeah, uh, but we can't let go. You got a whole operation going on. Operation yeah. going on. Yeah. On top of that, you got your wholesaling of the ice cream. Yeah, going that's, on, a, that's and supplying problem. all over all the. Dis- I, I was gonna say actually, like, would didn't the idea of opening up your own dessert shop appeal to you? No, at any point. Well, why? Because I supply many brothers nationally. And I wouldn't want them to be affected by me opening that area. Mm. I want them to do what they're doing. And I want them to just buy my product. And I'm happy with that. Mm. I'm more than happy. Bro, I'm not greedy, bro. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to take over the world. <laughs> Allah's giving me these things. If you had to give someone advice, uh, just to kind of wrap up, if you had to give someone advice, that's maybe thinking about coming into this. Shall I just tell you where we're going to finish off with the scaling, though? Okay. Inshallah, in the very near future, we're going to have a pot like a Ben and Jerry's. Okay, that would be sick. So that is, inshallah, future plan. If Allah helps me, my, my next goal. It might not happen this year, but inshallah, by the next year. It's day if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost there. I've got like 60% of the machinery to, you need. It's just the 40% of machinery that I've not got is very expensive. Well, so it's, like a, it's like an investment of plus half a million. Okay, so you're looking to manufacture and everything yourself. Yeah. So you want to outsource this? No, no, no. I would never outsource. Oh, my thing, I would do it myself. You've got, I'll give you uh, credit there, man, because it's not an easy thing. It's no, it's not an easy thing. And inshallah, 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 I know I've got the backing of the people and I want to work And I know, inshallah, inshallah, Allah when my people see my product on the shelf, they're going to, Favor my product. That will fly. Digital. That will fly. Do you understand? Yeah, hundred percent. I can see that already. Like the fact that you're putting the posters and the gimmicks that I've got to sell the yeah. product, I've not seen any company. I've not seen no one even using them gimmicks yet. What I've thought of here for when I get to that stage to sell that product is unseen. I believe that man. I actually believe that because the way you kind of set up your first takeaway with all the ideas and implementations <laughs> and. And now it's obviously, and it's evident to see what you're doing now with the ideas that you're doing, blowing up on TikTok, the type of content that you're doing, you know, inshallah, you know. Inshallah. Okay. As long as he wills. As long as he is, it's his, it's his will. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. Dude. We're just pieces of chess. We're just pawns on the puzzle, bro. You're looking for any investors, Shami? <laughs> you know what? Inshallah. Get them to wash around the corners. Okay, so for the brothers or sisters that are thinking about maybe coming into the industry, yeah, maybe or are in the industry but are struggling <laughs> to kind of put the sales or, I mean, uh, there's always a near there. You can message me. I can chat. I mean, I do get many, many messages from many, many people, and I try my best as much as I can. But if any of my brothers and sisters out there, they would need any guidance or advice, you know, I'm always there. What's like a general piece of advice that you'd give him though? Just like some general piece. General piece of advice, make sure whatever you sell is premium. Don't cut any corners, bro. Quality speaks louder than words. Customers that are paying money appreciate a quality product. Mm. That's vital, bro. If you start cutting corners, 
trying to maximize your profits. Yeah. People are going to notice, bro. You get me? I noticed that as well with my dessert business. You know, as soon as you try to cut something a little bit cheaper than... Yeah. Bro, you got to keep it premium, bro. you yeah. got to stay... you got to... If anything, if you're going to change anything, you got to make it more expensive and better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me? Mm. And have respect for your customers. Customers are there to spend money in your establishment. Appreciate it. Don't think they owe you anything because they don't. Mm. Value your customers. If there's been a mistake, the customer's always right. Mm. Customer's always right. Has there ever been a customer where you just, like, just move out of my face, man? Like Never. Never. <laughs> Never. Rather look for my customers. No, but you know how you, you, you will get them. You'll get rude customers. I've never had a rude customer much. Yeah. Never. That's amazing, man. But that shows, to, I think that's more because of you as a person. You're... Whatever that is, I've never had to, I've never had a rude customer. <laughs> that's, that's so hard to say in this industry, you know that. Like, I, I don't think I know any other person that's never done. Bro, I'm, mashallah, mashallah, in my life. Obviously, if there's ever been a mistake with a food product, I've rectified it straight away. Yeah, yeah, I'm just... But I've never had a rude customer, what you could call rude. Someone who's took the piss, someone who's not been happy with the service, someone who said, yo, you're taking the piss, you're having me over, you're robbing us. I've never had, I've never experienced it. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. That's amazing, man. I think that's all due to you, sort of how you're running your business and... Bro, I've got appreciation for my customers. I want love for them. People are hungry for love. I like that, man. I like that. And uh, I think on that, we'll wrap this podcast up. If it's people want to... It's been an absolute pleasure. As I say, if anybody would like to discuss anything with me, I mean, I, I have got a very busy schedule, but I do try my best to make time. You're welcome to drop me a message or anything of the sort. If people did want to reach out, what's the best plat platform? So the best platform for me, a lot of people would say Instagram and Facebook. And to be quite honest, I now prefer my TikTok messages. I've opened my TikTok. You can actually message me on TikTok. and It'll come through as a request. And I, obviously, if it's something like, not something like, when are you coming to Birmingham or when are you coming to Luton? Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you open all these yeah. messages, the majority of them are kids. If you open that request, that's it, you're going to get inundated. But if it's something of any yeah. business use or any worthy cause that I can help you with or I can see that it's a, a serious question that somebody's raised, then by all means, I'll answer that request and I will get in touch with you. And then from there, the next step is then my phone number and then obviously I will deal on WhatsApp. If you've, if you've got any value from this episode, please give us a like. Make sure you subscribe, share with your friends and family. And we'll see you on the next episode on the Minted Minds podcast. Peace. Thank you very much.